welcome honorable chief guest professor r k singh head department of commerce delhi school of economics university of delhi resource person for the day dr manoj kumar devakar assistant professor center for economic studies and planning jawaharlal nehru university new delhi our honorable principal sir dr s p agarwal dr kamaljeet singh convener of this program dr nagender pal co convener of this program our organizing team and last but not the least dear participants from all over the country all of you are warmly welcomed we have dr kamaljeet singh convener of this program with us dr kamaljeet singh is presently working as an assistant professor in department of commerce of ramanujan college he has an experience of 16 years and more with business statistics and marketing as his areas of interest sir has completed various research projects and is acting as an editor of our ugc careless journal ramanujan international journal of business and research sir has also published various research paper in journals of national and international repute i request dr kamaljeet singh to give the introduction about this two week faculty development program organized by department of commerce and teaching learning center of our college uh thanks madam parul saini uh, good morning one and all uh, respected chief guest for the inaugural session of two week faculty development program professor r k singh who is currently the dean of faculty of commerce and business studies and head department of commerce delhi school of economics university of delhi i as the convener of the fdp thank you on the behalf of whole organizing team for sparing time out of your busy schedule sir it is really our privilege to have you here with us thank you sir our principal dr s p agarwal thank you kamal ji thank, thank you. you sir thank you sir. our principal dr s p agarwal who is also the director of teaching learning center ramanujan college uh, dr t k mishra vice principal ramanujan college dr nagender pal teacher in charge department of commerce and convener of fdp uh, senior faculty members madam rachna gupta dr k lata young faculty members of department of commerce organizing committee members of fdp and my dear participants i welcome you all to the inaugural session the teaching learning center at ramanujan college university of delhi is offering this online two week faculty development program on research methodology a learning journey from bivariate techniques to multivariate techniques for faculty members and research scholars of higher education in the country from december 10 to 23 2020 this fdp intends to explain the important aspects of research methodology give exposure to different data sets quantitative techniques and their application for analysis in social science research this fdp includes lectures and hands on sessions using softwares that are used in empirical researches main aim is to significant increase the quality of research and publication output of participants to facilitate this we have invited eminent and well renowned experts as resource persons uh, to ensure the smooth conduct of the program in accordance with the mhrd guidelines and to ensure that you get maximum benefit and good learning experience in online mode and to make it more fruitful the following set of rules have been decided which are mandatory for all participants to follow as this fdp is being organized under the prestigious prestigious pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching scheme of ministry of education teaching learning center give prime importance to willing and serious participants who are eager to learn in this context it should be noted that the certificates will be awarded to only those participants who will be present online and engaged 
during each session of the FDP. Attendance will be taken multiple times during the session. Participants should ensure minimum 90% attendance during live session. As a part of Ministry of Education requirement under the Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching Scheme, all participants need to submit online feedback for each session. Link for the same will be shared on a daily basis by Telegram to you. This will also be one of the parameters of attendance for each day. To make FDP more lively, you will be receiving assignments and quiz on a daily basis on Google Classroom after the end of the session. Uh, it is compulsory to join Google Classroom for all. The link for which has been already shared to you, you are required to submit the assignment and quiz on the same day. Attempting, attempting and submitting the quiz is mandatory and each participant should score a minimum of 40% or about in total to avail of the program completion certificate. As mentioned in the FDP brochure, pre-installation of the software SPSS and JMUVI is required. You are requested to install the same. To make more clarity about the concepts and to clear doubts, there is a discussion group on Telegram where every day participants can discuss their query among themselves from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. For each day, link and assignments, you are requested to strictly follow the Telegram channel. Also, you are requested to not to send any greetings message or any unnecessary message on the Telegram channel or during the live sessions. I know some of these rules may appear strict, but we have MHRD guidelines to follow and TLC Ramanujan College has its own benchmark to uphold. I seek your full cooperation in this regard and remind you that all the above mentioned rules will be followed in letter and script. Hope you all have a satisfying learning experience and are able to get valuable insights from this FDP, which can be applied throughout your academic life. Please feel free to reach out to the organizing committee members in case of any query. I once again, thanks to chief guest for this session, Professor R.K. Singh for accepting our invitations. Thank you, sir. And participants for their participation in the FDP. Thanks and best wishes to all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for briefing about the workshop. We now have our Honorable Principal, Dr. S.P. Agarwal with us. Sir has an experience of more than 40 years with his areas of interest in financial markets, institutions and services, international finance, investment. Sir has published various papers in journals of national and international repute. Sir is also an active member of NAC team. He has chaired various national and international conferences from time to time. I now request our Honorable Principal to welcome the gathering and to give his valuable inputs. Thank you, Parul. Good morning and welcome to all dignitaries, my colleagues and participants from all over India. Our chief guest today, none other than our own Professor Ritesh Singh, who is Dean and Head Department of Commerce, Delhi University. Uh, no other person can be better in a program organized by the Department of Commerce, especially on research methodology, because that is his area of interest. My colleague, Dr. Kamaljeet, Dr. Nagendra Paul, other organizing team members from Commerce Department, Management Department, and other departments who have joined us today in this program, uh, which is a FDP for two weeks, or we can call it a refresher course on research methodology. Friends, uh, all of you know about the institution, but uh, some of our participants have joined from other places. So briefly, I would uh, discuss about the college. Well, college is basically 
a delhi university maintained a smaller institution had about 3000 students and 120 <clears throat> faculty members the institution is very highly up upcoming progressive and innovative institution besides teaching research and projects we are continuously engaged in newer pedagogies in teaching through ict technology and other focus areas for the benefit of students our objective regarding our students is very clear that we should produce good human beings ethical human beings and stress free happy students and to some extent we are able to achieve it through our center for ethics and school of happiness regarding the training programs under pandit madan mohan malvi national mission for teachers and teaching friends uh, this is a center the college is a center since 2017 and let me tell you that the objective of this center is little different than what we used to have uh, in our hrdcs or cpdhcs in various universities of course training programs were used to be organized there for our promotion and other things we have all used their facility but that was uh, uh, the intent was really different and when we started this initially we faced lot of problems but once we came to know that this is the way we should handle then things become easier but the problem again was that in those programs because those were residential programs in offline mode uh, very few administrators used to leave the teachers especially our young teachers who are ad hoc or maybe on 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 a uh, guest basis so that was a hindrance in in their training programs but when covid 19 you know came the college came out wholeheartedly that we will be training the teachers from all over the country and our target is to train each and every teacher even in the remote area of the country and you will be glad to know that we have already achieved a target of more than 70000 teachers and in next few months we will go to 200000 teachers well the basic uh, objective of these uh, teaching uh, learning center is to train teachers not only in pedagogy teaching pedagogy but also in research tools ict tools online teaching tools and various subject related including we have done some programs on yoga uh, jammu and kashmir so we we are quite innovative in organizing uh, these programs well friends the training the importance of training most of us have learned by doing the things we have started teaching and uh, by way of every day we learned it but today things are different we need teachers in large numbers we need to train teachers because young teachers going to the class and managing that is is a challenge so training has its own importance which you will realize after doing these programs and another important aspect is that especially in ict or research uh, tools we do not have enough training in our ug and pg courses even in our uh, course work in mphil and phd that is my realization why i am saying so because when as a young scholar i went to united states in 1986 the first thing i faced was that we have to do certain courses in research tools in application of software especially spss and sas and statistical tools and uh, econometric tools and highly advanced mathematical tools and i was really stunned we we were not trained for that so that is the reason these training programs are very very important and we are trying that we should train you in each discipline in different discipline in different softwares so uh, because in e in one program we can train you on hardly in one or two uh, tools but uh, we keep on organizing the programs you, you you know it now another important aspect see today not only it is useful for our research and writing of papers 
but this is useful for training of the students that is very key because the other day i was talking to my bms students most of them are working at good places but they are saying sir knowledge of data analysis risk analysis and ict tools is the key in in job requirements so unless until we are trained how can we train our teachers that is the key at least we should expose them to to these i mean uh, students are very uh, fertile they will be trained themselves but at least we should expose them to the new technologies why i am saying new technologies and new technology include each and everything and all of you know that during covid the people with technology were more in demand rather than losing jobs or or, or something else so this is a key thing in 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 today's uh, uh, requirement of teaching learning friends another important thing that most of the time we say that our uh, our teachers in arts humanities uh, culture regional languages uh, Uh, uh languages like hindi and other languages they they are not trained in ict but today we have all the tools to train them in ict and another important thing is that our new education policy uh, the national education policy 2020 you must uh, you know read all of you must read at different forms we 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 have organized programs on that also uh, uh you know if you know some of you might be knowing that this is divided into three parts the school education the college university education and professional education and there if you see the main emphasis is to create large colleges and universities with multidisciplinary approach it is not that there are some universities or college with single uh, thing like our shriram college like our sai sukhdev with single disciplines no we need multiple disciplines and then another important thing is that as per new education policy we should combine arts humanities culture with the stem stem means science technology engineering and mathematics which is very popular in us and europe so we have to see that we need to train them and uh, integrate the art and uh, uh, art and humanities with science that is the key thing in new education policy another important briefly i would go though i i don't have that kind of time because our expert will talk to you more uh the structure basic thing is the structure four five things in uh, national education policy structure you know that in school education they have changed it from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 similarly in college education which is going to come on us or university education ug and pg 3 plus 2 either or 4 plus 1 and their emphasis in 4 is research in last one year so that is the key we need these kind of training and responsibility of teachers have increased over the period so structure is important curriculum what we want to teach to them that is also key we need to reform review each and every step because sometimes we want to give so many things to them i have seen this tendency among our uh curriculum makers that they want to teach everything in the world to the student of commerce or student of uh, hindi or uh, you know let us not do that let them uh, let them uh, innovate themselves we should give them the basic knowledge and then students should learn or students whatever they want to learn let them gi be given freedom third important thing is the pedagogy which we are trying every day because there is no limit to pedagogical tools uh you know uh, i need not define uh, our expert will define but uh, there are so many things in pedagogy and you can create your own pedagogy there is so much uh, leverage and that is what it is because when you are going to the classroom you are the king or the queen because you have to handle the class not the principal or not the administrator not the dean you have to and there is lot of freedom is there there so you you must innovate you must do something different what others are doing so that class is interesting and another important thing is the online and digital technology in education because this covid has taught all of us and we need to learn more about the technology in online classrooms in creating this because this will be 
द फ्यूचर नाउ बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट अफकोर्स द स्टूडेंट्स विल कम टू द कॉलेज इन इन फ्यूचर बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी विल हैव टू ऑर्गेनाइज सच प्रोग्राम्स दैट वी हैव टू यूज द ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग बोथ ऑनलाइन एज वेल एज द ऑफलाइन मोड another important aspect for teachers today is that oral and written communication very very key you know unless until you can communicate you can orally do communication and written communication should be of top class uh, otherwise you will not be able to publish in good journals because we always talk about uh, you know the top class uh, web of science uh, scopus journals abcd journals so unless until we have good Uh, written communications we we cannot do that another important aspect which uh, which i feel uh, teachers must think all the time that uh, most of the time we say we hear from newspapers that most of our graduates more than 40% of our graduates are not employable now whose responsibility it is that means we have not given them the right technology we have not given them the right skills and sometimes we say that our job is just to teach not to teach them the skills not to teach them the uh, vocational training not to that is not that is a misnomer friends we have to combine each and everything so we have to think we have to do lot of work as per uh, new national education policy uh, we need to think about these things and we have to give right kind of technology to the students so that they are employable thank you very much Thank you, sir, for your enlightening words. Now we have our chief guest, Professor R K Singh, with us. Professor Singh is currently head of Department of Commerce, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also acting as the Dean of Faculty of Commerce and Business, University of Delhi. Former to this, he was working as Associate Professor in Shri Ram College of Commerce, University of Delhi. He did his phd and masters from university of delhi his areas of interest includes human resource management organizational and personal effectiveness spirituality he is currently supervising phd and mphil scholars at department of commerce university of delhi sir has more than 40 research papers and chapters published in reputed international and national journal sir has to his credit best business academic award by all india commerce association hyderabad 2007 sir has been a member of association for psychological science usa he is also the life member of association of constitution and parliamentary affairs and many others he has also been invited as resource person for various faculty development program organized by various educational institutions like guru jambeshwar university of science and technology hisar delhi productivity council delhi mohan lal sukhadia university rajasthan and many more he has also conducted many training workshop at various reputed institutions including indian institute of public administration new delhi indian institute of forest management bhopal and many more He has been the formerly editor, business analyst, a bi-annual journal of Shri Ram College of Commerce, University of Delhi, and several others. Sir has also been the member of Academic Council, Lucknow University, member of governing body, Narsi Munji College of Commerce and Economics, Mumbai, and the list is endless. I now request Professor R K Singh to address the gathering. is online yes sir okay am i audible parul yes sir yes. everyone yeah yeah ah uh, thank you so much parul and uh, thank to principal of uh, ramanujan college dr s p agrawal for uh, roping me in in this program thanks to convener dr kamaljeet singh for giving this opportunity to me to be with you today i 
colleagues from Ramanujan College and scholars, resource persons who are with us from different parts of this country. As uh, Dr. Agrawal was making a mention that this pandemic has given a lot of challenges and more than that, many fold opportunities to think, to innovate, and to take ourselves to the next level. Currently, I'm sitting at a very remote place, but I'm able to connect to you, I think, thanks to Corona. We would have not thought of such kind of networking, such kind of use of technology had this challenge been not there with us. And converting challenges into opportunities that very much gets epitomized in the working of this college where you all are going to stay for next two weeks because this college has got a very dynamic and positive leader. Kind of program this resource center does. You yourself would be vouching it at the end of the second week. <clears throat> And undoubtedly, it is the need of the art to sensitize scholars, academic teachers, how to look at newer realities and how to look at research. He would be processed in next two weeks on several issues of research as topic is very interesting that how to depart from bivariate to multivariate. In this process of learning of techniques of doing research, couple of cautions I would like to give <clears throat> from my side. When we are talking about research, <clears throat> two things become important. One, the element of continuity and second, the element of discovery. Continuity, if I say so, it speaks about that research is not done in silo. Research is not that one day you make a new invention which has no background of the past because it is not searching, it is researching. Therefore, that element of continuity must be there in the domain of research. That whatever has been done by the predecessors, the preceding scholars, how we go for looking at their work in order to find a newer meaning to the existing work, their work, and take this journey of the continuity forward. 
so research is a relay race it is not 100 meter race it is a relay race it is not even a 400 meters it is many million miles journey where every researcher goes for handing over the baton to the next researcher often uh, when i look at uh, research projects which comes to me for uh, funding by different funding agencies or look at the thesis of the research scholars this element of continuity somewhere is found grossly missing a researcher has uh, found something interesting in the domain uh, he is experiencing or doing some uh, academic or otherwise work and therefrom picks up some research topic does not go for looking at that what the previous scholars have said that is why the einstein a great scientist used to say that the research starts by climbing on the shoulders of elders to climbing on the shoulders of elders means what the preceding scholars have done and when you are climbing on the shoulders of elders then your world view is better than the person who is carrying you so this what must be there in a research that how to take this journey forward and the second element of discovery the element of discovery is finding a newer meaning to the existing realities as pandemic as corona has made us to revisit the existing realities a person like me who has been trained to go for offline teaching since last 30 years one fine morning a notification comes that tomorrow onwards you have to make your classes online then of course i was simply zapped and aghast left with no option but to crave but in a day or two when i realized that this is the newer reality which needs to be utilized to start a fresh to unfreeze what has got settled in me in last three decades and relying on that i paid handsome amount to learn what is online teaching and how to revisit my own style of teaching often when we go for online teaching we use a very primitive model of online teaching that what we call as a substitution model of online teaching as if we are not there in the offline class physical class therefore we are there in a online class but that is the first and very subliminal level of uh, uh, online teaching the next level of online teaching is how to augment augmentation means that whatever is available how to make it accessible to my student my audience even this is also little more than that substitution model the third level of online teaching which talks about modification modification in the style of teaching modification in the entire schema of academics and this starts with bringing students there in the forefront bringing students there in the center and designing the teaching in and around the students and the last is redefinition of the education where everything is to be revisited everything is to be rediscovered currently what happens that in my department two classes are put together so total duration of the class is of 100 minutes 
so if the teacher is there in a physical class for 100 minutes then creates a different kind of the reality but when the teacher is there on the screen conversing to self conversing to the screen not able to look at the faces of the participants not able to understand their nods then this 100 minute in entirely way that is what is the redefinition do i go for embedding quizzes in my interactions do i go for creating inter some people entertaining kind of thing in my classes as we often crack jokes in our physical classes do we go for creating meaningful engagement for our students there in the classes so there is need to rediscover same thing is required there in the research also that the existing realities must be revisited in order to take that continuity to the next level and this discovery would be the contribution of the researcher and as we are learning the mechanics of the research the tools of the research talking taking our journey from uh, by to multivariate days are not very far off that whatever data we are collecting through our means that data which is already accessible to machines and machine will go for preparing a better research report than the research report prepared by the teacher physically an example i am giving you we are using um, mobile phones smartphones we are using um, social media we are using unibody phones interesting thing about the unibody phone i am taking slight digression earlier the phones used to have a separate battery that whenever you want you can detach that battery from your mobile phone but now the unibody phones are there the batteries are very much there and you can't take it out if battery life is gone then the phone is gone it is not the development of technology it is because this phone collects the data even if if we switch off the mobile phone the phone is steals the data there is interesting book if you want to refer authored by a psychologist working in the domain of uh, technology shubhana zubaf she in her book surveillance capitalism goes for giving very exhaustive illustrations that how technology is creating data from us you often get information at the end of the month that where all places you visited google goes for whenever your location is on google goes for keeping record of all your locations and at the end of the day that is the month it goes for sending you a report and what all places you have visited on the basis of that google sends you push messages that these places you visited therefore you like these kind of the products i use a, a screen lock in my mobile but this mobile has understood the biology of my body so even if a screen is locked and i keep my mobile phone in any of my pockets with the interaction with my body the temperature the the movement the screen lock is automatically on and the same phone when it is put there in somebody else pocket it will not be on so i am very happy that whenever i keep it in my pocket this uh, mobile phone lock it is unlocked but no every of the movement of mine is being recorded by this mobile phone and it is not record of the movement only it is creation of a data it is generating a data that where all i go what all steps i take 
when do I go to bed, when I get up, what all websites I visit. So this mobile phone is cloning a user. It has more data than me. What I know about myself, it knows more than me. So if this mobile phone, the technology, has more data than what I have physically, then the days are not very far off that this technology automatically will go for preparing a research report for me and for similar persons like me or the persons, those who are not like me and will prepare a report which would be sold there in the market maybe in next two, three years, maybe five years time. So if data would be accessible to technology and analysis would also be accessible to technology, what researchers will do? You look at the report of uh, World Economic are having the element of replicability, repeatability, are going to be mechanized, going to be machinized. So if this research, the data is accessible to technology and processing is also accessible to technology, are we heading towards an age where the researchers would be redundant and the researchers would be replaced by machine. Why I'm saying so? Because if the research method, we will learn it as a tool. Only the mechanic part. So this mechanic part would be learned by the machine better than us. Therefore, it is very much required that other than this mechanic part, we understand that what is the strategic part of the research. The tactical part of the research is perfectly fine. That would be taught in such programs. And this college, as I told you, does very beautifully. But until and unless we go for reflecting on these tools and the mechanics, what is taught to us and take it to the next level so that we are able to discover ourselves, this will only remain a tool which has high degree, high element of replicability and anything and everything, what is replicable is replaceable. These days, airlines have gone for reducing the manpower. And with the reduction in the, in the manpower, their customer care is not having any human interface. So you will not be able to speak to any human being there as a customer care. Wherever you will dial, a, a machine would be there. As it is there with the Siri and the Alexa and the Cortana. So uh, a machine. So uh, researchers, learners, academics, they have to understand that the human aspect that is to be kept with us. If that is lost, and we know only how to go for a logic regression or the probit, or go for using Bayesian model of research, or go for a, a doing a uh, uh, some uh, structural equation modeling or some other uh, uh, canonical uh, correlation or some other sophisticated techniques, if we will not apply what is there with us, which is not there with the machine, this mechanics is to be taken with the pinch of salt. So I'm not saying that you don't learn the tool. I'm not saying that you don't learn the mechanics. You learn. But what is the soul behind that? Delhi University had a professor uh, 
math professor of mathematics heading the university five six years back professor uh, dinesh singh he often used to quote in his lectures that few mathematicians in order to prove that a good kind of cooking of the data can get a publication in best of the best journal passing all the 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 reviews and all the routes and he quotes that there is a paper which mathematicians they got published in mathematica or some other uh, journal when it was published then they wrote to the publisher that see this model is not good because there is a lot of cooking there this they told to make people understand that see the only mechanics should not be uh, looked at when we are talking about the research their research is something more than that and for bringing that something more than that for that we have to have a thinking mind we have to have a reflective mind so learning the technique and re reflecting that what this te technique actually does how it operates and if not this then what and can there be a possibility that this technique what re result this technique is giving is statistically there is a possibility of tweaking with that there is a possibility of looking at things with the entire new meaning if we would be able to keep this part such kind of the training programs will not be only making us a good researcher could be creating a very humbling effect making us a good human being because it is not learning the research and publishing it at good places getting that research acumen the research manship in is still in ourselves and when we become a researcher then we are thinking in terms of publishing but when we be a researcher then we start looking at things from a researcher perspective everything we are having our day to day life and if we are in a mode of be researcher so being researcher it goes for identifying pattern wherever that researcher is becoming researcher then we have to have some physical data where we can go for applying the tool therefore there is a need to take a departure from becoming researcher to being researcher and that would be possible only when the technique we will learn we will reflect and make it the part our, of our flesh and blood make it a part of our dna so that we start thinking like a researcher so that we are able to create a bigger picture we are able to see a bigger picture where where wherever we are and i'm sure that your two weeks of stay uh, at uh, ramanujan uh, teaching learning center would be able not only to make you learn the tools and techniques but would be able to make you understand that what is the strategic part of the research and how researcher thinks how researcher visualizes and how researcher goes for having a a a, a grand uh, a narrative in the mind about the topic about the area in which uh, one is doing the research i wish uh, all participants uh, a very be best and enjoyable two weeks uh, journey and thankful again to organizers uh, dr kamaljeet singh for uh, inviting me to share my very scattered uh, ideas about uh, what uh, a research should be thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you it was thank highly you. informative and passionate lecture mm -hmm. not only you touched research yes, but also the online teaching and the human face to the research which is a very important aspect because most of the time we uh, collect data uh, 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 you know write it in our research but we don't apply our brains into the actual analysis so that is very very uh, important you 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 discussed with these researchers and i'm sure that it will be very highly useful and we will as an organizing team will continue to learn out of it that how to frame our uh, you know courses and pedagogy to train young researchers thank you very much thank, thank you, you professor so thank you
Thank you for the wonderful words, sir. Listening to you always keeps us motivated and inspired. A resource person for the day, Dr. Manoj Kumar Devakar, has also joined. Dr. Manoj is working as an assistant professor in Center for Economic Studies and Planning, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He is teaching statistics, health economics, biostatistics, econometrics, research methodology paper, as well as softwares like SPSS, SAS, R, MOs in universities. He has various projects related to clinical research, dental physiotherapy, and social science at university, as well as for other organizations to his credit. He has good publications in many reputed journals. He was former biostatisticians for prestigious clinical research organization like CliniRx Research Private Limited, Fortis Clinical Research, and many more. At present, Dr. Manoj is visiting faculty in Clinical Research Education and Management Academy, Delhi Tool Engineering Institute, as well as in other organizations for the biostatistics, SAS, and SPSS. He is also a member of Data Safety Monitoring Board of various studies of clinical trial. He delivered more than 100 lectures in FDP workshop training programs under MHRD induction program and delivered lectured in various institutions, central universities like Delhi University, Jawaharlal Nehru University, and many more. We once again welcome you, sir, and we would like to hear a few words from you. So please unmute your mic. Sir, please unmute your mic. Yeah, so I'm also welcoming you, all of you, in this uh, program. So uh, the chief guest of this program, uh, Professor R.K. Singh, sir, and uh, Professor S.P. Agrawal, principal of Ramanujam College, and convener Kanvaljeet Singh, and the coordinator Pankaj and Parul. So I will be uh, welcoming you all the participant in this uh, 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 faculty development program. And this is the one of the platform where the uh, students and the faculty and uh, our scholars can learn the research techniques and the research methodology uh, tools. So basically uh, what, uh, uh, I think uh, you are having the this uh, workshop title from bivariate to multivariate. So basically, you need to learn. Uh, you know, uh, I think now the uh, scholars are more familiar with the bivariate techniques and how they will be applying the bivariate methods. But now they need to learn the how they can go for the multivariate because we will see there is a lack of uh, 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 publishing their article in the very uh, reputed journal. Uh, or in the Scopus general. But once we will be uh, looking into the, these kind of the uh, things, means we will see how we can uh, create our data, how we can create our data, and how what kind of the techniques we can apply. So this is the major thing where the people uh, who are sitting in the Western part of the uh, globe, they are just focusing on the this part because once they are knowing the, they are having the data and they are knowing the what kind of the techniques they can apply so they can mold the many things in a different way so this is can be helped with the help of the researcher as well as with the help of the uh, the uh, statistical technique and this is the only way where they can uh, deal about the things. And do you heard about the big data? So nowadays, uh, the highest pay can, pay can be given to the uh, big data people and data scientists. What is the big data? So this is the another uh, uh, very good area. Uh, it is a very, you can say that it is an emerging area where the people are getting the lot of, lot of idea how to analyze their data. So basically, big Big data is nothing but, or the uh, the data scientists, what they do, they play with the data. Basically, they are more expert in the uh, in the uh, way of applying the multivariate analysis. Uh, they are thinking 
differently than the other people are who are maybe a researcher or who are any uh, corporate uh, person so this uh, big data and data analytics is a, another part of this our uh, uh, program that is a multivariate analysis once you will be familiar and you will be applying these kind of the techniques in your publication and in your research reports then it will be very good idea and it is a good idea for the society also because once we will be putting this kind of the techniques then other scholars our scholars maybe a uh, new generation people will be applying that this kind of the uh, uh, analysis and you are the familiar with the there are a lot of the uh, scope in the uh, social networking site and e marketing businesses so this all can be driven with the help of the big data and the statistical analysis only so there are the uh, certain uh, disciplines are emerging nowadays uh, data scientists is there uh, data analytics is there so it is nothing but it is the just uh, just they cooked uh, they cooked in a different way and they are just using the all kind of the uh, complex analysis like the bayesian analysis they will be using the structural equation modeling and they will be going for the uh, all kind of the regression so if you talk about the regression so there are the more than uh, 20 30 uh, uh, regressions models so what kind of the model they can go for the, their data so this is the uh, the the work which deal by the other uh, data scientists so this is the another area for the even uh, we can also uh, guide the our scholars so they can also look into the these area so and uh, another aspect which i learned from the, during this covid 19 so how the research can be changed what what are the teaching boards can be changed during this period because of the covid 19 you see that you need to do your research from the your place only so th this is the another aspect where uh, we need to do our research on the basis of the telephonic uh, interview maybe a telephonic conversations and we will be doing with the help of the some uh, inter internet based uh, things these are the things which we need to talk about and uh, there are the once you will be applying this kind of the uh, publications uh, uh, in the publication you will be applying the multivariate analysis some big data techniques then it will be enhance your profile basically you can publish your uh, piece of article in a very reputed journal or in a scopus or in a web of science so i think uh, this is the key way to learn from the here and this is the platform for all of you i think uh, i will be giving you a success for this uh, learning platform so all the best thank you sir we'll be starting with the session soon we now have dr nagender pal co convener of this program with us dr pal is having an experience of more than 12 years having human resource management and marketing management as his areas of interest sir has attended various national and international conferences and has published papers in them he is actively taken various administrative responsibilities from time to time is presently acting as the teacher in charge of department of commerce ramanujan college i request dr nagender pal to present vote of thanks to this inaugural session thank you thank you very much parul uh, a very good morning to all uh, honorable uh, chief guest professor ritesh kumar singh head and dean department of commerce university of delhi uh, our uh, resource person dr manoj divakar uh, center for economic studies and planning uh, johala uh, national university johala nehru universities our principal dr sp agrawal vice principal dr tk mishra sir uh, senior faculty members and all the participants uh, present here i welcome you all in this faculty program uh, which is being organized by the department of commerce uh, in collaboration with the teaching learning center ramanujan college it's my honor to propose a formal vote of thanks i on behalf of the department of commerce would like to thank our chief guest professor ritesh kumar singh for sharing time out of his hectic schedules and uh, enlightening us with his knowledge i am also very thankful to our principal for inspiring and giving us the opportunity to organize this uh, 
faculty development program sir your constant support and guidance always motivates uh, motivate us thank you so much i extend my thanks to the uh, convener dr kamaljit singh for organizing this uh, faculty development program dr kamaljit uh, singh uh, is uh, an expert of uh, organizing this uh, type of faculty development programs and i hope that uh, in future he'll uh, organize more uh, programs for the department of commerce i'm very thankful to uh, the non teaching staff of our college for their possible supports and uh, i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the members of organizing teams pankaj parols and uh, dr anchals for their tireless efforts i extend my thanks to the teaching uh, learning center ramanujan college for uh, collaborations with the department of commerce last but not least a special thanks to all the participants from different colleges and universities to be the part of this faculty development program and i hope that uh, uh, this program will be a fruitful to all of you and definitely you will enhance your uh, knowledge by attending this uh, programs wish you all the best and thank you thank you very much yes thank you thank you parna thank you sir for such a lovely vote of thanks uh, we'll be having a short break for 5 minutes and then we'll be starting with the first session i once again thanks all of you thank you thank you everyone thank thanks. you thank you sir thank you everyone thank you thank, thank you sir we'll be starting with the session at 11:25 thanks madam parul seni welcome sir from the student asking uh, from the participant
बाद वो तो फ्रेंच के बाद ना वो जैसे वो वो कुछ ना कुछ का इधर उधर जाना है कोई प्रोग्राम हमारा और चल रहा है इसलिए इसलिए के लोग उधर ही खा रहे हैं एम आई ऑडिबल डॉक्टर मनोज सर नहीं तो वो तो हो जाएंगे सर कैन वी स्टार्ट सर कैन वी स्टार्ट सर या पारुल वी कैन स्टार्ट वेलकम बैक टू द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम द फर्स्ट सेशन विल इंक्लूड टॉपिक लाइक बेसिक्स ऑफ रिसर्च टाइप्स ऑफ रिसर्च रिसर्च प्रोसेस टाइप्स ऑफ वेरिएबल्स टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा एंड सोर्सेज ऑफ डेटा आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट Dr. Manoj sir, to start with the session. Thank you, Dr. Parul. Welcome. And uh, I think all join this uh, program. Now we can start, na Parul? Yes, sir. We can start. So I will be sharing. so once again uh, good morning all of you and uh, welcoming in this uh, faculty development program which will be emphasizing uh, or you can say that how you can extend from the binomial or uh, bivariate analysis to the multivariate analysis so i will be covering in this uh, introduction of the research and the type of the research type of the data type of the variable and what is the measurement all this can be uh, covered in uh, in today's sessions so i will be starting with the research so what uh, kind of the research you will be uh, um, uh, you will be receiving uh, and what kind of the uh, if it is you are having the work in a different disciplines so might be you will be uh, from the uh, uh, from the various uh, uh, disciplines so what kind of the research you can opt for the your research area so this is the uh, one of the uh, uh, preliminary uh, uh, area where you need to understand that your research can be linked with the what kind of the research types so this can, and what what should be the your research process so research once you you will be talking about the research process so research process nothing but it will be starting from the very beginning of the your research okay so it's just identification of the problem so how you identify your problem and then at the end of the research means you need to do the statistical analysis and then writing these uh, Uh, reports of or you you will say that you will be writing the report thesis dissertation and that in between that there is a, uh, so many process will be occur which will be start with the review of the literature and the sample size estimation randomizations and then uh, you will talk about the study design okay so the study design is the one of the important part of the any research process and then after that you will talk about the what uh, what is the data collections and what kind of the statistical tool you will be applying then after that how you will be collecting the data and then that that data will be coming to you so finally if you if you are getting the any data then how you will be analyzing that data so it can be analyzed with the help of the bivariate analysis maybe you will be applying the chi square t test or maybe a some a simple statistics or you will be go for the higher statistics so maybe you will be going for the confirmatory analysis uh, factor analysis structural equation modeling canonical uh, regression and you can go for the uh, structural equation modeling then you will go for network analysis so what kind of the analysis you will be requiring so basically uh, we will be discussing each and every uh, aspect of the a uh, research process and then we start with the uh, research so
so what is the research so how the research can be defined in the uh, in the area of the social phenomena or maybe in the phenomena of the social sciences so because a little bit be uh, we are differentiating here uh, but the research type can be a similar if we talk about the in social phenomena or the science phenomena but the the phenomena is different because we talk about the social social means we talk about the social issues we talk about the political issues or other aspect of the humanities we will be dealing in the case of the social phenomena once we talk about the science phenomena so it deals with the some kind of the experimental so it's more related to the some kind of the experimental work so we look more on the uh, uh, exploratory or some kind of the uh, experimental research or some pure research so that will be we will discuss in the uh, science phenomena so you might be uh, you might be familiar with that if it is you are having the uh, any experimental uh, or you can take an example of the covid 19 so if you are work on the covid 19 so let's say one uh, scholars want to develop a vaccine or he want to uh, contribute for the in, uh, development of the vaccine and another person is just want to look look up after that what is the impact of the covid 19 on the uh, on the employment what is the impact on the the salaries so these are the different uh, phenomena what are the change in the society uh, during this covid 19 so these are the phenomena can be addressed in a different ways of the research so what kind of the research you will be opting in case of the you are in the uh, in any discipline then accordingly what uh, sort of the research you will be uh, uh, taking so next is uh, what is the research so research can be made or can be defined based on the these four ways that process activities and the problem and systematically so basically it's a very uh, rigorous process because in the research uh, in the in inaugural session we uh, discuss about the so many phenomena means how you can uh, uh, publish a good papers how you can uh, uh, talk about the online research okay so these are the process where we can see what kind of the process and activities you will be involving and what kind of the sort of the problem you are taking in in any research and how you are doing this kind of thing so there must be some research process so it should be a very systematically so once it it is a systematically then you will be saying that it is a my research so research is a process where you need to do the activity so activities means you will be going for the sample size estimations you will be going for the data collections and there is a, some problem so you will be getting the answer of your problem so basically whatever it is there is a few things which you need to learn about the always once we talk about the research then uh, you need to identify some problem so that problem can be identified then after that you will talk about the what are the concepts so what are the concept will be used in that identification of the problem so that concept can be go for the some uh, kind of the indications so what kind of the indications so how you identify that this is the my research problem this is the my uh, hypothesis so you need to ind identify the some kind of the indicators so for example if it is uh, we will be saying that uh, the the impact of the covid 19 on the the infrastructures so the people are how much buying the what are the buying capacity how the how they are living uh, in the uh, in the uh, houses so these are the problem which can be addressed in the case of the covid 19 on infrastructure so if it is the people are not taking much houses or they are shifting from the one place to another place so we can see what kind of the impact uh, can be seen during this uh, COVID-19 on the infrastructure. So this research is a process wherein we talk about the activities are carried out. So activities are carried out, out systematically to find out the solution of the problem. So solution of a problem means you, you, whatever you identify the problem, that 
can be answered with the help of the research process or there is a, some activities will be using here and then we will say that this is the happening for the my identification of the problem so whatever the my problem is there then we can talk about that this is happening in that case so now we will talk about the uh, research process so before of the research process i just give you the uh, there are the so many uh, research process uh, flow will be available but it is more important that what are the topics you are covering inside of that because sometimes uh, what is happening that the people are just uh, talking about the uh, identifications of the problem and the objectives and the analysis and the report so basically there is a uh, sub part is also there inside of the research process so how you can defining each and every parts of the research and how you carry it out so basically you just carry it out the your research in a very systematically manner then uh, it is the more uh, easy to get the uh, success in your research so research can be uh, done uh, very systematically and very prominently through the uh, if we are following the research process so research process is uh, nothing but we uh, we just follow the uh, if you see this slide then you can able to understand that what is the research process so research process is nothing but we start from the scratch so we uh, maybe um, we, we may be thinking that we will be doing the work in the area of the health economics maybe i will be working in the public health somebody is interested that uh, there is a lot of problem on the uh, farmer pmc or apmc so how you can uh, give the better idea about this resolution of the problem so so you are want to you want to work on such kind of the problem so that is the you identify your problem so this is the define your research problem or you can say that it is a identification of the problem so identification problem can be uh, motivated through the some of the your previous experiences or your uh, you may be uh, heard about the some of the uh, literatures you gone through the some of the books so it can be uh, come from the your motiv your own motivations or maybe the motivation given by the your guide or maybe given by the uh, other society peoples so that uh, is a basically your broad idea then after that you you will say that specifically i will be covering uh, this kind of the problem and this problem can be seen in the a papers in the reports or in the thesis or in dissertations or newspapers so i need to do the basically a review of the literature so the review concept and the theories so basically i need to review the what are the happening in that particular problem or in that particular area and what kind of the theories are available because the you will see that there is a economical theory is there okay so if there is a consumption pro production model is available on any particular problem so i need to look these theories if it is we talk about the social uh, social phenomena then i need to also look the what are the social theories available in that particular area so i need to consult those areas or those theories then after that uh, my uh, review of literature can be completed and review uh, Pre previous research findings so basically this is also uh, basically nothing but it is the just you uh, consulting the the work done by the other scholars okay so the work um, can be mentioned in the reports so maybe the reports can be mentioned by the any scholars or maybe by the government bodies also so this kind of the literatures you need to do in case of the review of the literatures then after that you need to formulate the your hypothesis okay so before of that i will be mentioning one more thing that is the objective of your research so broadly uh, broadly it is mentioned that the people are considering the what are the objective of research sometimes uh, this uh, formulate hypothesis is not available in case of the some qualitative research but most of the time the people are also keeping the uh, the objective of the research as well as the formulate the hypothesis so what are the objective of the, of the research so basically uh, i will tell you there are the three major things which you can learn from here and learn from uh, my presentation that you need to define your 
research problem properly you can take the time once you will be defining your problem and then after that you need to tell about your objective so maybe your objective can be a two or maybe objective uh, three four or maybe a more than that but uh, you need to think that what is uh, if you are keeping the one objective or you are keeping the more than two objectives so which win which will be more better okay so it is always suggestible that if you are having the less number of the objective then your your area of research may be precise and it will be a very good if you are having the less number of the objective so you need to define the your objective so objective can be uh, very uh, achievable because you cannot keep the objective like that which cannot be achieved because sometimes we are in the hurry and then we decided that we will be keeping this kind of the objective but this cannot be achievable in the, that time frame or maybe in that uh, constraint because of the constraint of the resources and the other uh, financial resources will be there so that's we need to uh, understand then after that we need to define the uh, the formulate the hypothesis or we need to tell about the what are the your hypothesis so basically whatever the, your objective is there let's say there are the four objectives so this is the first second and then third and fourth objective then correspondingly there must be a hypothesis okay so this hypothesis basically we uh, used to uh, understand in case of the statistics so in uh, if you are the uh, statistics people or you are the scholar then you might be knowing that there must be a hypothesis for the each objective so the uh, maybe uh, for one objective there may, may be a uh, more than one hypothesis so more than one hypothesis it can be a two hypothesis three, three hypothesis so based on the three hypothesis we can tell about the my, my one objective similarly i can do for the next objective so this is the basically the important aspect in any research problem is that first is that what is the, your problem second is the what is your objective and what kind of the data you will get or what kind of the data you will bringing out in any research so these are the uh, three uh, as i am the uh, uh, research methodologist and then i will suggest to you these are the three key points where you need to uh, understand that if you are working hardly or very uh, prominently on these uh, three aspect then it is the very important of any uh, for the any research purpose so you already defined that this is the your hypothesis so hypothesis can be defined if it is uh, just a projection of what you will do in the statistical analysis so let's say that if it is my problem is this one and then it is the uh, it can be achievable or not okay so this can be done for the your objective and the, your hypothesis can be uh, analyzed with the help of the statistical method then after that we talk about the design research and including the sample designs so basically now this portion will tell about that how you will be executing your research maybe uh, what kind of the design will be uh, required so design can be uh, defined uh, what uh, if it is it can be uh, it can be done for the the in which area what kind of the data collection and what how you will be collecting the sample size sample size and what will be your sample design so sample design means how you will be extracting your sample from the population so population may be broader so if the you know that the vaccine is coming for the the covid 19 so the covid 19 so this uh, vaccine maybe go for the most of the people of the world okay so most of the people of the world it means that the the conduction of that vaccine trial or vaccine experiment can be done based on the uh, let's say uh, 5000 to 10000 patients only and after that once it will if you will get the safety and efficacy of the that vaccine then it will be uh, it, it it will be given to the all most of the human beings of the world so this is the basically what is happening that you cannot conduct this kind of the trial on the entire population so you are extracting some of the part of that that populations and it, the trials are going on if you heard about in the newspaper or in the tv so there are the phase one trial is conducted phase two trial is conducted and phase three is conducted and then after that it will be phase four trial is uh, four, uh, phase three trial is uh, successfully then after that it will 
be given. So maybe uh, I think today and yesterday the the vaccine was given in the UK. So this is the basically the how you will be creating your designs. Okay, so maybe your design will be. Uh, uh, in cross section or maybe in a longitudinal way. So what kind of the way you will be adopting to uh, basically I just want to uh, conduct my vaccines in, in India, uh, trial of the vaccine in India. So maybe my site will be in uh, Mumbai or maybe in Delhi or Kolkata. So I'm just considering the four major cities and then in that cities. So I will be identify some of the hospitals where I, I can get the patients. So similarly, you can also think similar way that you will be conducting any survey in, um, in your Uttar Pradesh or maybe in your districts or in maybe Rajasthan, then you need to tell about that how you can identify your samples. Okay, so this is basically a sample design. And then after that, the collection of the data. So this is the another important part and then you will face the lot of the challenges uh, of, for the collection of the data. So lot of the challenges, what are the lot of the challenges you will see, you will face the, that uh, uh, if you are doing the survey, then lot of the people are not giving the response. If it is somebody is giving, then they are giving the not appropriate answer so the, the lot of the problem will be uh, there but you don't uh, worry but you need to uh, sharpen yourself because as you are the good as you are more capable to uh, take the response from the uh, field that is a uh, that is the depend on the researchers how the researchers can bring out the data so that data can be collected in a uh, primary or secondary that will be another uh, things but you, it is depend on the researchers who is doing the research then how he bring out the data from the field so ba basically the field uh, can be an experimental or maybe a survey one or maybe a some qualitative case study also so it is depend on the researchers so how he want to bring out the the data so data can be collected uh, through the interview also or through telephonic interview. So there are the lot of many ways is coming nowadays because see uh, nowadays is one of the big term is coming that big data, okay, data analytics. So what is that? So if the, the companies who are running the online, so let's say if we talk about the, the Flipkart, if we talk about the Amazon, then there are the lot of the data is uh, collected backend in the back end of the uh, these sites, there are the lot of the data is coming. Then immediately they are planning for the, they, they collected the data online, but after that they are can predict for the features of the, or they can, they, they can clear the demands of the customers. So this is basically done. They are having the whose data. And so this is the one of the source. So how they are collecting the data. So if you uh, talk about the, uh, the very government uh, various government schemes is there so where you need to just enroll yourself so the, what is uh, the government is doing government is also collecting some kind of the data so this is the one way where you can collect the data similarly if we talk about the telephonic interview is there and there is a normal interview so you uh, you can go in the field and then you can get the interview uh, done in the field so there are the different ways so if you can uh, now transform yourself if you are in the you are in the in this covid period so you can also learn that how the people are having a uh, different idea which they are doing regularly in the previous or in the past okay so they are can they can collect the data from the from the their computer also so they can create the question and then send to the people but there is a, some authentication problem but still you can create the some questions so that you can find out the this is the faulty uh, response by putting the some of the vague questions Okay, so that way questions can be put it in the questionnaire, then you can easily identify that this kind of the response is coming. That means that this is not good for my research. So there are the so many ways. Once you will be learning these kind of the things, then you can able to understand. And uh, <coughs> now after that, once you are having the data, then next uh, uh, plan is that you need to tabulate your data or you need to enter that data into the your computer. So there are the, uh, nowadays is, uh, if it is, we talk about the Flipkart or Amazon. So once they created this, their website and the platforms, 
and then immediately after that they can get the data of uh, th their customers and what they want and how they are purchasing then accordingly they can make the policies make the the things available for them but if we talk about the uh, my research if it is i am doing the telephonic interview then i need to uh, create a sort of the document where i need to write each and every things which we got from the telephonic conversations if we talk about the email uh, email based survey so if it is email based survey is there then i need uh, i will get the data automatically after just uh, response of any any respondent so this data is coming to the immediately to me and if it is i'm going to the field and then i'm filling up the some questionnaire then what i will need to do i need to enter that data into the excel so that is the another way and if it is uh, people who are doing the experimental research you may be doing the experimental research in case of the humanities or you are in the from the science also so even uh, in that way also you are collecting some kind of information and putting into the excel and then after that you will be sending for the some kind of the platform and which is those platform as nothing but it is a a statistical software okay so after that once you are having this uh, your data the next purpose is your data is you need to clean your data and then after that you need to analyze your data okay so this is the another important things how you want to analyze so this workshop is made uh, to uh, change from the uh, to journey from the bivariate bivariate analysis to the Uh, multivariate analysis so this is the how you can learn from the bivariate to the multivariate and what kind of the 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 analysis you can perform so that is called the analysis of the data so here basically what i am doing i am testing the my hypothesis so i am i am telling about the my objective and then i am telling about the my what is the my the uh, identification of the problem what was the my basically my topic of the research so i can tell based on the this uh, the data so once data is with you then you can is analyze and then you can tell about the your hypothesis so first hypothesis tested significant non significant and there is other variables information is given to you uh, while you are doing the analysis then you can tell about the your hypothesis hypothesis can go go back to the objective and objective can tell about the broadly about the your research so this is basically it is happening uh, in the analysis of the data so analysis of the data can be done for the qualitative data for quantitative data or you can um, say if whatever you you doing the research maybe you are doing the 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 historical research or any experimental research then you need to analyze that data okay and finally then once you will be uh, done the statistical analysis then inter interpretations of that output so it is very important because now the such kind of the workshop is available with you you are attending this program and then there are the uh, other program is also going on but it is uh, important for you how you can learn the things okay how you can do the interpretation how you can create the reports so this is important because you can do the statistical analysis with the help of you know the spss you can go into analyze and then data reduction technique and then you can apply this this that okay but it is more important that what are the assumption is required what will be the interpretations of that output so that is a one of the important aspect of any research that how or in any statistical analysis how you can do the interpretation so if you are good in the interpretations or you can take the help from the any statisticians which you know or you may involve the some of the statistics then uh, after that once you are getting the uh, answer of your hypothesis you, maybe it can be rejected or it cannot be rejected then we talk about the uh, the reports so you can uh, mention about the rejection and failure and then what is happening with the your objectives so that you can write it in a, a report so this is the basically a research process where we can see that we you required some of the feedbacks also so maybe uh, you can feedback can be done in the, at the time of the design also at the time of the uh, 
uh, the the analysis so you can do uh, you can see this flow chart so whenever you require the feedback so you need to go back and then make changes according to the you know, the feedback to uh, given to you so this is the the uh, the research process so if it is we here talk about the research process then after that uh, what kind of the research design you are using so maybe uh, you you are having the uh, the the historical research philosophical research or it is a action research so these sections we will be elaborating here in the next slides so we we will be talking about the what are the research and what are the research types so is this we already discussed the steps of the research so steps basically some uh, um, some scholar is defining it as uh, the identification of the problem, formulation or the hypothesis, data collection and the data analysis. So this is the another uh, process, research process, or these are the steps of the research, which you can see. So uh, here uh, you can see how you can uh, deal with this, all these four steps. So we already discussed about the identification problem formulation of the hypothesis. So formulation of the hypothesis is the another important aspect, but it required uh, different uh, uh, sessions on this. So formulation, so how you can formulate in a different discipline. So if you are in the history, then how you can formulate the some kind of the hypothesis. So a lot of these statistics can be applied in the political science. So if it is the political science is also using the modeling, regression analysis can be done on the elections data also. So a lot of the analysis can be done on the um, this uh, political science. So you need to learn yourself how you can uh, you can uh, build your research, uh, your uh, research orbit, so that you can um, apply the maximum of these statistics or maximum statistical analysis can be done. So this is the uh, depend on the you how you can exploring yourself. Then data collection and the data analysis. So data collection, so we need to collect the data from the field or from the any other sources, and data analysis. So data analysis is a sort of the analysis which can be done with the help of the statistical software or maybe from the Excel or maybe by manually as well as. The identification and the formulation of the research problem. So basically, uh, I told you in the very beginning, so there are the um, a few important thing in entire research process which i can understand maybe it can be very according to the scholar so if you go for the um, the any harvard harvard university then you will see that there is a, a different view but my view is that if it is we focus we more strengthen our the identification of the problem or of, while the formation of the research question or research objective and how what kind of the sort of the data will come we discuss more on that and then we talk about the data analysis. These are the my three um, my uh, perceptions where we morely focus on this. This, if it is we are very good in the formulation of the my research problems or research questions, then it is the very good research and it can be achieved once we will be also doing the collections and types of the data uh, keeping in any research. So now selection of the research area. So what kind of the area you will be opting for your research pro re research? So this is um, already, I told you that it is depend on the your, how you motivate it. What kind of the problems you want to resolve in the, your research? Okay, so they, maybe it can be consideration with the, your peer team. So what kind of the peer team? Peer team is a, a kind of a group where we talk about the, your supervisor will be there, some other faculty having the same area. Okay, and you and your other scholars will be there. And this is called a one peer group and which needs to be discussed. What kind of the problem you can keep in your research and how you you can do it. And you can, so it, this is the, you need to create your own research, uh, your research um, environment. So where you can discuss the lot of the uh, discussions need to be required while you are selecting or you can do any uh, any any of the research process, then you might discuss within the your peer team. So and then reviewing the literature and the theories so that we already discussed a lot in the the research process. So we look about the what are the uh, literature is available and the, what are the theories available. So focusing the research topics, then evaluating the research problem 
problem. So what can be uh, research problems can be identified for the, this my topic. So this can be done and the formulation of the final statement of the research problem. So this uh, will be coming from the once I will be going for the many uh, exercise of the literature review. And then after that, I will be saying that these are the my statement of my research problems. So this is the important aspect where you need to do a lot of these things. So uh, I identify the seven challenges while you doing the uh, the the for the research. Okay, so the, these are the challenges which can be uh, uh, can be discussed maybe in this workshop. You can having the lot of session on these challenges. So the challenges of the choosing the right methodology. So what kind of the methodology you will be adopting in this uh, uh, <clears throat> in this session and how what kind of the things you will be keeping so this is the very important aspect so research methodology so means that what kind of the the research you will be opting in your research okay so maybe what kind is the historical research philosophical survey research so what kind of the research you will be keeping so that is the depend on you and then after that, choosing the right topic. So right topic means uh, you might be having the other topic, which I'm already emphasized a lot on this, means you must uh, uh, work on the lot on the your topic. So what kind of the topic you will be keeping for the, your research. And then assembling the research teams. So maybe me, your research team is nothing, but it's uh, you, your peer teams where you can discuss a lot on the your topic so maybe nowadays it is uh, the, uh, the what we call it is a den of the covid 19 so now you can create online uh, research team so online research team you can discuss within the that team so the same people who are working on a particular area then they gather the, their data and then start discussing you give suggestion to the other people and you can take the some suggestions from the other people so this is the um, um this is the new idea which i'm saying here because you create your own research teams for the discussion of the your research uh, uh, some of the research points. Okay, finding the study participants. So what kind of the, so it's uh, difficult to, uh, either you can do the experimental research or the uh, the survey research, or you can do the field research, then finding the participants, so, or really the participant give you the the uh, the response. So this is the important things or where we need, uh, facing a lot of the problem. And then after that, getting the institutions to the participants. Okay, so uh, how the participant can be uh, uh, getting the institutions and they stay motivated and working plans. So this is the another important part. You must have the working plan. So what is the working plan? So uh, let's say you kept it that this is your research problem or this is the your first objective then how you can achieve in this one so what kind of the data will be coming from the field so what the question you will asking what kind of the activity you do the uh, experiment so that you will give, get some value so that can be analyzed later on okay so this is the in the very beginning so in the very beginning of the research it should be prepared once it should it is prepared then you must you go for according to the your work, working plan so you must have the in this period i will be doing this much so that much i will take the six months for the review literatures i will take that much time for the data collections so this must be a this a plan should be there with you and dealing with your data so dealing with your data is uh, basically the people are facing that i should be, apply the the binomial distributions or i will go for the um J distribution so th th there are this so many problems are coming so means you will be uh, going for the multivariate analysis you will go for the bivariate analysis what kind of the analysis can be applied on my data so this is the question is coming but once you will be going going for the such kind of the workshop then you can able to easily learn how you can deal with the your data so uh Again, so research is already discussed about that, what kind of the research is there and then how you can um, see what are the, the types of there. So entire research. So the entire research can be divided into the two parts. One is the qualitative research and the 
quantitative research. So what is this qualitative research is the quantitative research. So if we talk about the in entire globe, there are the whatever the research is available. So that can be divided into the two parts. One is the qualitative research. Another is on the quantitative research. So qualitative research, what kind of the qualitative research if you can doing the case study on the uh, uh, any particular problem, very minute problem or if you doing the historical research. So these are the part of the qualitative research. If we talk about the discrete statistics or discrete research, then it will come into the quantitative. So there are the a division of there. If it is you tell about that, these are the two divisions where we can talk about the, this kind of the research is coming to the qualitative and this kind of the research is coming to the quantitative. So basically here we can do the narrative analysis. We just, uh, looking into the one case. So this is coming into the, the qualitative research. So uh, the qualitative research and the quantitative research. So there must be some basis of division. So I, I, I you heard about the philosophical research, descriptive research, or uh, survey research is there. So there are different divisions. So this is the one division, which is, which is based on the quality. So quality, Whatever the quality of research that can be divided into the two parts, then qualitative research or the quantitative research. So, for example, uh, present in an exam and checking the exams. So, what is this? If it is uh, my problem is based on the the present in exam or checking the exam. So, history. So, basically. History uh, uh, it is a qualitative or quantitative research. If we talk about this, some historical facts. So is this a, a qualitative or quantitative research? So it is a qualitative research, okay? And if it is, we talk about the English. English is another part of the qualitative research. So English means we are just referring some kind of the poem. We are uh, uh, referring some of the novels. So this is the a uh, qualitative research. So we are reading the novels, and then based on that, I can I want to do the, some narrative analysis, some thematic analysis. Can want to do. So these are the qualitative research. If we talk about the psychology, so psychology is a. Uh, uh, qualitative or quantitative. So psychology maybe uh, sometimes can be qualitative, but it is a quantitative research. Okay. So present and in any exam. So let's say if you all are present, so there are the, um, I think 250, 240 uh, participants are present. So this number is giving you a quantitative. So it's telling about the quantitative research. Once we uh, talk about the the checking of the exam. So exam can be checked by the my oral uh, my uh, my view. Once I'm giving the numbers, that is the quantitative research. Once we talk about the checking the things, so I'm just reviewing it. So this is giving you a flavor of the qualitative research. Okay, so what are these approaches? Because the qualitative and quantitative research can be divided in the, these two parts. And uh, qualitative, uh, quantitative re uh, approach is research agenda is predefined and pre plans. Okay, so in the quantitative case, I know that I will be, for example, if I'm checking the copies, and then I know that this is a hundred marks uh, paper, and then each question has the, some specific numbers, which needs to be given through the each questions. So I. I'm having a, it is a predetermined pre plan. So I out of 10, I need to give some numbers to the each questions. So this is the this is the happening in case of the quantitative research. So here the things are uh, predetermined and pre planned. The method are finalized, pre prepared beforehand. Okay. So methods of the analysis and the categories procedures are predetermined and the domain is largely predetermined. So basically what is happening here, you know the, uh, the things, what will be happening, so how you can uh, deal with these such kind of the data. So in that, that is happening in case of the quantitative approach. So qualitative approach, it is the data direct for further exploration. So you will get some kind of the informations. So it will be exploring that area, exploring that. So let's say the speech given by the Modi on a particular uh, 
occasion so i need to analyze that speech so that speech is the just a further exploration about the some facts some some uh, his ideas so i need to explore it so this is the happening in case of the qualitative research method of often often emerge from the field so this is the maybe here i cannot specifically say that you will be using this kind of the method but it can be uh, um, uh, uh, done in the field also means in the field you will be emerging some kind of the method so maybe this kind of the more appropriate method in qualitative research so the the analysis basically a, a categorical analysis can be done or you just narrative analysis can be done so it is based on the grounded theory open exploration for the domain so here we can uh, do more exploration about this thing so qualitative research is nothing but it is a unsystematic so here you cannot go for systematically it's just unsystematically and easy and quick it can be give you the answer maybe an easy and quick or sometimes it can um, uh, taking a longer time and unscientific unscientific is also because we cannot go for the some kind of the uh, scientific way because we just find the some uh, narratives so we can do the narrative analysis it does not make the contribution to the theory so it will not give you the direct contribution to the theory it is a regress and cannot be used along with the quantitative methods okay so these are the uh, uh, differentiate between the qualitative and the quantitative so this uh, quali uh, quantitative is uh, directive uh, based uh, research and the, it is a uh, inductive uh, based or uh, here we can do the in depth interview ethnography life histories autobiography autobiography of mahatma gandhi autobiography of uh, baba sahib bhimra ambedkar life history of the abdul kalam okay so focus group interview case studies case studies on the uh, the the hatras uh, case or you can see the lot of the things is coming if you want to work on the uh, this uh, um, suicide case is also there so you just want to on this particular case so conversational disclose and content analysis so these are the qualitative uh, uh, way of uh, 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 research and the quantitative here it is the the scientific method so experiment here you can do the experiment experiment in maybe in the lab or maybe you can uh, uh, set up the experiment in the field also so so you heard about the the abhijit banerji is also talk about the some experiment which can elaborate uh, um, um, uh, can work, he work on the basically on poverty so such kind of the experiment can be conducted in the field also and the survey survey so descriptive survey exploratory survey so this can be also a part of the quantitative so here the basically more statistical analysis can be performed in that case so uh, if we talk about the data so why i'm always talk about the um, how you need to uh, Uh, define the what is the data what is the variable what kind of the things so if you more familiar with such kind of the things then it is a uh, very easier to uh, to run in your uh, research activities so this number of the represent the informations so like a questionnaire survey data frequency measurement of um, labels ratings so this is the happening in case of the quantitative uh, research or th the quantitative research you will get the numbers of something okay some some figure will be coming so this is the happening in the quantitative and qualitative the word text pictures and observation so i will be seeing that how this uh, this uh, pictures can be uh, seen in that video okay so how this person is interacting about the research methodology so this kind of the uh, uh, by the picture by the text by the interaction we can find in the qualitative so these are the my the data the analysis so analysis is means that quantitative analysis means analysis that rely on the uh, numerical computational and descriptive and inferential and this will give you the uh, these kind of the information searches for the pattern con contingency concurrences and the representations and here we will use for the mean as the proportion all this kind of the uh, measure we will be using in qualitative research that data is not rely on the numbers so it's not basically a number it's just uh, some narrative some pictures I, i can see the pictures or based on that pictures i can tell about the the any person so if it is i can enter into any room then i can tell about the behavior of the person while seeing the the things in the room 
okay so this is the uh, the way where you can understand the the differences between these two uh parul how much time is still in this session pankaj parul is anybody is here and this is the data and analysis so data and analysis here you will see that a uh, qualitative and quantitative and what kind of the analysis you can perform if it is you are having the qualitative or quantitative data so if we see that you are having the qualitative data and you can perform the qual qualitative analysis so this is the case description and the narrative analysis and if it is we talk about the qualitative and quantitative so quote and the frequency and some pattern analysis can be performed and similarly these are the diagonals so here either this uh, the data can be qualitative or analysis can be quantitative so here you can do the similar kind of the things and the, if you see the quantitative data and quantitative analysis can be leads to be a maximum analysis so here leads to be means that you can play with uh, your data with the lots of the statistical methods which A, or you can go for the multivariate analysis you cannot go for multivariate analysis in case of the um, nominal data in case of the qualitative data so here if you are having the quantitative data and quantitative things then you can uh, go for the uh, the multivariate analysis so this is also important that let's say i'm planning to uh, learn the multivariate i'm planning to apply the multivariate but i'm not bringing out the data so what will happen it, at the end i am not able to apply the multivariate so it's also important to you need to understand that what kind of the data you will get from the field okay accordingly you can plan for the um, your research so next is the uh, the types of the research uh, is uh, mentioned here so basically the next uh division or ma uh, i will say that next type of the research can be defined in this way so here the philosophical research is there historical research so which talk about the based on the some history so we want to do the some historical research and then survey research so survey research is the another part of the uh this types of the research and the experimental research and the case uh, case research okay so basically here uh, what is happening here this uh, uh, philosophical research so how you can uh, deal with the philosophical research in what sense you will be using the uh, philosophical research okay so historical research and the survey research and experimental so survey research can be again divided into the three parts one is the exploratory research descriptive research and the correlation research so how you can do this kind of the research how you can opt this research and it will be suitable for the your research topic okay so basically if it is any uh, any research which is called the philosophical research which is based on the vision so vision of any person vision of the new education policy so what is the vision of the new education policy so that is kind of the research is called the uh, philosophical research okay so i am just looking the what is the vision of that particular thing so vision of the abdul kalam so what is the vision of the Ab abdul kalam about the the scientific research about this sci science and technology so this is the visions i so i need to refer the visions of that particular person or particular Uh, phenomena so this is the, uh, called the philosophical research so once we will be dealing with the philosophy of any any person so that is called the philosophical research then we will go for the historical re uh, hi research so historical research is nothing uh, historical means it's telling about the history so history nothing but it is telling about the past so what is ha happening in the period of the ashoka so what kind of the economical activities or what how they are dealing with the economies in the period of the ashoka or in the period of the akbar so if it is i am referring those documents and referring those documents then i am telling about the this is called the my historical research okay so let's say if it is we talk about the constitutions so indian constitutions so it is also a 
the past literatures and i need to tell about this is the my historical research okay so some of the person is also uh, working on the constitution uh, uh, a uh, constitution of india so they they are just uh, doing the the, uh, the historical research so this is the basically once we talk about the past and it is based on the some kind of the uh, literature some um, some material will be available so this is called the historical research now we talk about the survey research so survey research is um, something which is talk about the present so <coughs> in the present you heard about the aishman bharat uh, yeah aishman bharat um, jan arogya bima yojana so this is the one of the health insurance which is uh, which is the one of the world largest uh, health insurance given by the modi government and this is the basically uh, the health insurance for the poor people or the people who are the socio economically caste census based on the socio economic caste census data or some poverty data so this is the basically this is the i just want to see the implementation of any uh, the government schemes so what is the implementation of that government scheme so what is the progress of the that scheme so i'm just talking about the present so how in the present scenario what is the the implementation what is the progress so such kind of these things i need to tell about let's say um, let's say the ongc people so uh, or uh, you can say that uh, mathura refinery is um, is uh, uh, located in mathura only so it's a part of the uttar pradesh so the uh, mathura refinery people wants to explore another uh, refinery within that particular area so there is some um, some uh, criteria while the while the finding out the another area for the um, for the ongc so what they digging the to know the what is the oil uh, um, in the ground so what is the uh, uh, depth of the oil or maybe some uh, the other soil structures we will be finding by the ongc people so they are digging the the uh, the machines inside of the uh, land then after that they are basically what they are doing they are exploring themselves exploring the different areas or different parts of the up and then they want to uh, they want to create another plant in that in in that area so this is the an example of the survey research so they are basically surveying at different parts of the location of the uttar pradesh so this is the and uh, we will talk about the description so description will tell you the how you can describe the particular problem so this it, it is a descriptive research so how this healthcare can be uh, can be spread in the csc and the psc so this is we, we will uh, talk about then after that uh, feature and the experimental research so once we will talk about the experimental research so experimental research is the one of the biggest example which all of you know that that is the development of the vaccine so development of the vaccine for the covid 19 so uh, the scientists are uh, day and night they are working uh, to develop the the vaccine so basically they want to do the some kind of the experiment they create some uh, some uh, composition and then after that they saying that it will be uh, it will be create the immunity within the body once you will take this kind of the vaccine so this is the experimental trial so it will be conducted and which can be used for the future so the, now they are creating this one and then it will be applied for the all the human being who are uh, who are the uh, having the covid 19 so this is the the feature, based on the feature so this is the experimental research <clears throat> then we talk about the uh, the case studies case research so what is the case research so it is nothing but it is a particular problem so particular case you want to solve particular problem you want to look out so that is the case research okay so this is the uh, just a one um, uh, description about the the another types of the research which we uh, so let's say i'm um, again uh, focusing on this thing so historical research uh, so it basically talk about the past so in the past means mogal times what is the education system what is the economical system or in the ashoka period what was the economic uh, um, how they are handled the economic 
how they make the decisions how they are running the economics okay so this is the the british period how they uh, emerge with the so many policies how they build up the new uh, infrastructures so i need to go into the back and then after that i will be deciding this is the historical research i can't section this fellows Sir, nothing will be optional. Survey research, survey research, it, it is a part of the exploratory research. So I am talking for here the exploratory research. So let's say I just want to uh, create another central university in any state, then which area will be more suitable to cater about the students to reachability? So there are the so many aspects which I need to look. while i am making another uh, new university in any particular area so i need have a uh, some certain parameters certain parameter means i need to look how the what kind of the student will be cater for this university or this location so i need to look many things and then after that i will be say that this is the place where i can uh, building a new university or new college okay so and then after that tata industry to know the places okay so if it is tata industries also build up a new uh, infrastructures for new services so how he can explore what kind of the things will be requiring to uh, to build up this kind of the things so basically uh, you want to see that let's say if it is um, any any guidelines any guidelines is coming about that pollutions okay so this pollutions uh, guidelines can be given to the people so uh, really what kind of the uh, places and what kind of the uh, places where you need to face some kind of the guidelines for the environment or for the pollutions so which uh, place is more suitable so that you want to understand that you want to see in a city so that is the um, the idea of the exploratory research okay now we talk about the descriptive research so descriptive research basically it's nothing but it just describing the uh, some something um, on the problem so let's say my problem is that uh, i need to see that this uh, the mental health uh, the impact of the covid 19 on the mental health so i need to do the descriptive research uh, i need to describe so how it is impacting this uh, uh, mental health so it is the uh, one of the way to understand the what is the descriptive research if i will go back to uh, let's say i um, i um, people are saying that uh, uh, i went to agra and then i let's say i came in delhi and i saw that lot of the everyone is uh, having the mask every person is in the delhi wearing the mask but if you go into, into the up they are not saying they are not wearing the mask maybe covid 19 so how i am having some idea once i came in delhi and then i am having idea and then i am telling the, uh, the 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 up people that you are not wearing this one but it is happening in the delhi so this is basically uh, what i am doing this is the uh, describing the Uh, the some uh, some uh, phenomena of any place or any anything that is called the your descriptive research now we talk about the correlation research so correlation research means uh, let's say something is uh, uh, aqi index is going to be high and the uh, the aam aadmi aam aadmi party or kejriwal imputing that you need to stop your cars while you are on the red light so let's say the it, it, the decision was made on today and then after that after 4 5 days the, the the decision was made that everyone should stop their cars and there are the some ngos also working to tell about the how we, they need to stop or they need to uh, stop their car and they need to is, stop their engines okay so this is basically some um, some uh, you need to see the is there any correlation between these two things if it is i am stopping this one and then it is really uh, increasing the aqi index or it is down it down downwards okay so it is basically you need to see what is the impact of something so let's say the tension and performance so if it is you are in the tension so really you are performing well or your performance will be going down 
so this kind of the research is called the correlation research so there is a, some relations or there is a, some uh, relation correlation between the two pa two uh, two parameters okay so hourly study and the marks in exam so how much you are studying and then how much marks you are getting so let's say you you are having the uh, all training and then there is no change in your knowledge so that kind of the research can be done in case of this one so now next is the uh, this was, earlier was the second type of the research i discussed about the uh, philosophical research historical research survey research and experimental and case research this is the third type of the research which is talk about the uh, uh, about the basic and fundamental theoretical research or experimental applied, applied research or action research. So these are the three types which is the different from the earlier. So this is the third type where we will uh, talking about the uh, talking about the types of the research. So this types of the research is the basic and fundamental and theoretical. So basic, what is the basic? So it is the uh, some uh, pure work is uh, some theoretical work is done in a particular area. Let's say I'm developing some theorem on mathematics. So this is the uh, my some theoretical work based on the some some basic ideas. So I'm developing some fundamental rule of the um, online networking. Okay, so what kind of the mathematical model can be created for the online social networking site? So there are the some fundamentals ideas can be given. So what can be the fundamental idea or what is the what is the theoretical idea to deal about the policies on internet? So there is a some basic idea or that can be generated, which is called the basic fundamental research the experimental applied research so experimental applied research is the research which can be applied immediately so let's say if it is um, um it is just uh, it is a part of the experimental research so we are we are looking at what kind of the applied area so if it is let's say the fan is um, um working in a clockwise direction why not it work in a in different directions so such kind of the research is uh, can be done Okay, so this can be done. It means that it is uh, one of the part of the experimental applied research. Action research. So action research is the immediate uh, uh, solution will be re required for uh, some problem. So maybe if you are having the um, <coughs> some problem, then how you can give the uh, resolution of those problems. So in that case, you need to see that what kind of the actions if it is such kind of the research you are carrying out that is called the action research so this is the another third type of the research so basic research are also called the pure research okay so th this is a pure fundamental research is the type of scientific research which the aim of improving the scientific theories for better understanding and prediction natural and the other things so the the, the the theory is given by the Galileo. This kind of the phenomena is coming. So these are the called uh, pure research. So such kind of the research is carried out. That, that is called pure research. Then after that, applied experimental research is the experimental research that apply to extend the theory to uh, in identify the real world uh, problem with the practical outcome in your mind. So basically, the applied research is the more basic of the theoretical research. There can be linkage between the basic and the applied research. Okay. And it describes the various practical phenomena and which will be conducted during the uh, applied experimental research. So this is the your experimental, applied experimental research where you can apply the very theoretical uh, ideas and this can be applied on the your practical ideas. Solving with the action research. So action research is the catalyst for transforming the learning required the teacher. So what kind of the catalyst can be given? Let's say the nowadays is, uh, you know, in the March, so in the March, month of the March, the lockdown was there. Then after that, uh, the government wants, the university uh, vice chancellor wants that how they can uh, uh, 
uh, tell the their professors so that the or students so they can start their learning so how what kind of be the transformation immediately required so what kind of the action will be required so in that case this kind of the research is called the action research so if it is we are transforming the learning ideas among the teachers and students uh, during this covid 19 so this is the one of the example of uh, action research <laughs> Uh, uh, do, do we have uh, a pa parole is here? Dr. Pankaj? Yes, sir, I'm here. Yes, yes, sir. So how much time is left till? Sir, I have uh, shared <coughs> with you on WhatsApp. There are two sessions of two hours each and the break depends on you. Okay, okay. So... Today's sessions are four hours, sir. Today's session is four hours. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So basically, uh, so basically, we talk about here uh, about the the very uh, design of the research. So in the first part, we talk about the the various uh, two types of the research. One is the uh, the qualitative research and another one the quantitative research. Then accordingly, we talk about the what kind of the data we will get, what kind of the analysis you will be doing. So again, I will be uh, there is there was the second type of the research is the uh, the philosophical research, historical research, survey research, and the experimental research, and then after that uh, the case research. So if we i will be discussing more on the what kind of the data and what kind of the analysis you can performing in case of the philosophical research in case of the uh, historical research and in case of the survey and the experimental and cases research okay so first we talk about the philosophical research so philosophical research is based on the some vision so what is the vision of the particular person and what is the vision of the abdul kalam ab about the education so i am just referring his uh, past ideas so i am going for the some of the literature of the uh, abdul kalam and then i am talking for the so basically uh, what i am doing that here so i am doing the some kind of the narrative analysis i am just reading the his visions and his ideas about the education so basically what kind of the data you will get here i think you will uh, not get the some numbers and some um, some whole numbers in that case so basically you are just uh, narrating itself in a different um, uh, or you basically you are doing the narrative analysis so here you are having the qualitative data so you are getting the data in the form of the quality so quality means you may be writing into the some paragraphs or some something where and you may be doing the uh, contain analysis or something like that so this kind of the data is available so this data can be also if it is the the philosophical research is with you then what kind of the uh, what kind of the analysis you can perform so you can perform the analysis is uh, based on the uh, uh, this thing so this is depend on you how you can do the analysis so what kind of the analysis you can perform so you can perform the the narrative analysis this is the one uh, which is the um, discuss already so this narrative analysis and apart from that you can do some kind of the uh, categorical analysis or something what do you think that you can do so if it is you are having the such kind of the cases so you cannot perform the much analysis so maybe sometimes you can classify some data into the some categories then after that you can go for the sum of the graph and all that so this much of the things you can analyze in case of the um, in case of the philosophical research now we talk about the historical research so historical research again you uh, need to um, uh, see the facts of the um, uh, <coughs> 
akbar uh, uh, period okay so some eco economical facts of the akbar period so now you need to see the some of the documents so which documents is just telling about the some some kind of the again a narrative analysis means you just reading the some of the uh, some of the uh, books of based on the the period of the akbar so that will give you some kind of the again narrative analysis and more to more and what kind of the data you will get you are get data is getting in the form of the quality so some of the qualitative information so means means that they are uh, collecting the tax in the annually so you you will be writing that it is annually or it's a uh, monthly or whatever it is so you are getting the some kind of the sort of some uh, some category or maybe you you are getting the narrative so this is a uh, data for the for the historical research then after that how you can analyze this kind of the data so this kind of the data can be analyzed with the help of the some graphs only some basic statistics so that much you can do with the such kind of the things now we talk about the uh, next one is the uh, the survey research so survey research is uh, can be divided into the descriptive then exploratory research and the correlation research so correlation research discrete research so basically you need to do the some kind of the survey so let's say i'm i mean uh, i'm taking the an example of the ongc so where he is digging uh, to look the water and the the oil inside of the earth okay so he's uh, what is the level of the things so he's capturing that measurement okay so where he explore what uh, what is the depth and all these things will be captured so this is what it is a sort of the kind of the data which is called as the uh, the interval and ratio data so here you can see that or if we talk about the uh, descriptive research so in the descriptive research you are describing some phenomena some process so in that case you will be getting the lot of the all kind of the data nominal ordinal and interval data so it means that you can analyze in a different forms so here you can apply the uh, so these are the sort of your data which you will get from the correlation and correlation research so in the correlation research so one is also another quantitative variable another is also quantitative variable so this is the data you are getting so data you will get from those research are the in the quantitative form so this is the your data and how you are, you will be analyzing it so here you can apply the lot of the statistics you can apply the lot of the statistics in that case so you can explore the some of the uh, structural equation modeling and exploratory analysis you can perform in case of the uh, uh, descriptive and exploratory or correlation analysis now we will talk about the experimental research so in the experimental research so what is you are uh, i will take the uh, an example of the vaccine only so in the vaccine so there is a some uh, the in the body we are looking that uh, this covid is positive or negative after the giving of the vaccine the first parameter which you are assessing second parameter what is the your uh, pulse temperature and other parameters uh, before and after of the covid 19 at a certain time interval and what is the your immune system what is the immune uh, there must be some uh, immune parameter that you are also assessing so this is again giving you a uh, some data so data can be in a Uh, continuous forms or oh, it is a interval and ratio so this data is also analyzed in a very very uh, very good statistical methods okay so you can apply the some um, multivariate or parametric non parametric methods can be applied in case of the this research then after that uh, you will be seeing that uh, there is a last one is a case research so case research can be done on a particular issue so let's say the rape case happen in in delhi so somebody some scholar want to uh, do want to uh, work on this area okay so work on this problem so basically what he will get so he will never get the some kind of the quantitative data so he will get maybe a qualitative forms so it's here you can get the data in the both the forms the qualitative and the quantitative but it's depend on the what kind of the case or what kind of the problem you are uh, looking into the research so this is accordingly then you can go for the some narrative analysis as well as for the 
the uh, some quantitative techniques can be applied in this case. So this is the basically how or when you can apply the uh, different kind of the statistics if you are having the uh, these kind of the research, then what kind of the data you will get and what kind of the statistics you can apply. So it will be it will be giving you an idea if it is you are having the uh, either a descriptive research or the, it is exploratory research, then you can evenly plan that you must know in the your uh, I discuss about the 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 plan the or uh, it is a study plan of your research so in that plan you must define about that what kind of the data you will get okay what kind of the research you will be applying what kind of the data you will get and then accordingly you will also decide about the your uh, your analysis also so this is the one part where you can uh, uh, see what kind of the things you can do in in these cases then after that i will be going for the next part is the uh, next type of the research is the pure and the fundamental research so pure fundamental theorem it, research is nothing but it is the just a different idea of the nature and the scientific technology so so i will be uh, investing some of the new technology which can be uh, reduce the uh, reduce the uh, some phenomena or reduce the time for reaching the any places while the tra by traveling by the any uh, any vehicles so how that can be reduced by the some uh, by the in invention of the some technology or some theory so this is the uh, the things which come into the pure research so i can uh, also talk about this some theorems can be developed so mathematical theorems can be developed so which can be also a part of the your pure research so this uh, pure research is uh, giving you uh, sometimes uh, a different kind of the set of the data. So it it will giving you a quantitative data means maybe a interval and ratio data, but it can be looked up. How you are looking that you require the some kind of the data or not? This is depend on the uh, some kind of the. Uh, in uh, depend on the technologies so what kind of the technology you are inventing so really you require the some support of the data or not so this is the another way to tell about the these things and then after that uh, we will talk about the uh, applied experimental research and the excel research so excel research uh, uh, first we talk about the applied experimental research so in that uh, it is a part of the experimental research so in the experimental research or applied experimental research you are finding the solution of some particular particular problems so you are inventing new drugs or you are uh, uh, you are having the new uh, devices which can uh, can be inserted in the human body so these kind of the things you want to invent so this can we uh, uh, check the safety and efficacy of the any device or the any you know, any drug so this can be done with the help of only the some data only so here we can do apply the lot of the regression analysis you can apply the parametric methods or non parametric methods so this is depend on you what kind of the analysis you can perform it. then um, in the last uh, we talk about the action research so action research is depend on the some kind of the uh, the problem based uh, things so what kind of the uh, resolutions will come okay so if it is the um, if you need a so it can be applied in the education research most of the time it uh, more uh, mostly used in the uh, education research so what kind of the implication of the particular course or particular the structures particular technologies can be adopted so this kind of the uh, again uh, need a support of the quantitative data as well as the qualitative data so this can be play with the both the way where you can analyze the data in the in that manner now we talk about the uh, this is the not a part of this a uh, lot of the research is coming during this covid 19 so earlier we talk about that some of the structures kind of the research but nowadays you see there is a lot of the big data analysis is there where the people or the market research people are just exploring so these are the exploratory analysis if it is at the back end they are getting the lot of the data from the social networking site from the e-commerce site or from the lot of the e, um, lot of the internet website ngos are there which can uh, which can come come with these lot of the data so this has the different kind of the research design which 
uh, is come into the exploratory research design and tell about the more about the how you can uh, predict the your customers perceptions you can predict your customer uh, customer prediction and then accordingly you can bring out the such kind of the things in that scenario so this is the uh, uh, another important aspect where you can also look what kind of the new techniques or the research can be uh, coming in these days this is the all about the i think on the research and where we can also talk about the big data and the data analytics so this is the another part of the research where the new people also explore so a lot of the research can be done based on the uh, internet data so that data is also available for the analysis purpose and lo lot of the market research analysis can be performed by for the various e-commerce uh, so, uh, e-commerce Sites. Okay, so accordingly, you can also plan for the data analysis. A lot of the um, um, statistical method can be applied on the such kind of the website. So I think uh, I will be uh, stopping here so, you know, about the types of the research and research process. And uh, I, in the next session, I will be discussing on the types of the data and then. Uh, more on the big data, data analysis, and the uh, uh, variables. This will be discussing in the next session. So if you are having any questions, then you can ask, then I will be happy to. Pankaj, now you can we have some questions. Can we have some questions, Parul? Yes, you can ask questions, sir. Um, uh, sir is with us. Uh, anybody can ask question if you want. Participants, we will, uh, you know, uh, resolve your queries regarding attendance after the sessions. But meanwhile, you can ask your queries related to the session. Uh, queries uh, session. If you have some queries, you are most welcome. And the queries related to attendance, we will address them uh, once the session is over. Some of the queries were they want uh, participants wanted to know about the quantitative research to survey and also the methodology uh, methodology about the experimental research. Okay, so in case of the survey research, so you want to uh, survey the various. Uh, let's say you want to survey the. Um, Asa's work okay. and how they are uh, uh, dealing with the maternity uh, rural women and uh, how they are helping them for the another uh, kind of this thing. So this is the uh, uh, maybe uh, it can be done in the qualitative or quantitative manners also. But if it is let's say you ask about the qualitative, so qualitative can be uh, you can have a sort of the some kind of the interviews with them interviews with the ASA people and then you can ask about the certain um, the certain phenomena happening happening in a particular village so how they are dealing with the women in a different uh, profile so some maybe some uh, a little educated highly educated or maybe a uh, illiterates also so how they are uh, motivating towards the uh, the institutional delivery and all so this kind of the uh, i need to uh, give the evaluations or uh, successful uh, of this asa in, in universal health coverage so such kind of the things can be done through the interview and other kind of the uh, uh, interview and discussions within the these two people so this can be a uh, the way for the doing the um, research and uh, second, you ask about the phenomena of the experimental research. So, experimental research phenomena can be depend on the your work. So, what kind of the work you are having and how you can want to perform it. Okay, so maybe you want to set up your experimental within the your laboratory, maybe you want to set up your uh, phenomena your things in a in any village so let's say any schemes is coming about or some awareness program is there about the covid 19 so you want to see that um, there is a, some ngo is involved in that okay so what is the effect of the ngo to spread about the um, the covid 19 um, 
uh, awareness about the COVID-19. So such kind of the problems can be done with the so impact of this uh, this kind of the guidelines or awareness programs. So what is the impact on the human being? So there is a before and after kind of the things can be done. So there is a lot of the things uh, uh, is available for the such things. So next, I think this uh, next question, if anybody. The next question yes, is yeah. correlation related to research, future research. Future research. Future research is nothing but it is an experimental research. So if we talk about the uh, development of the vaccine, so it is a development of the vaccine is for the future only so once we are involving in the development of the vaccine uh, and we are looking that it is a safe and eff effective for the controlling the covid-19 so this is the future research so uh, let's say the government is putting the five year plan then what is the future uh, impact of uh, on the uh, the society so such kind of the things is uh, uh, called as the features uh, research Sir, next question is, they want more elaboration about inductive versus deductive research. Uh, this is the uh, inductive and deductive. You can see that it is the one is the use for the qualitative, another is for the quantitative. So uh, deductive research means you are having the some uh, uh, way of generalization. So we, here in the quantitative, you can generalize the things uh, from the some scratch to you can generalize in the uh, quantitative research. So means you can have a, some exploratory research or you can have a survey research. So you can build up a, some kind of the theory. So uh, this is the uh, one of the scientific method. And in case of the inductive, so inductive is just kind of the giving the some uh, elaboration of the something or uh, it is the just is, uh, it is give, giving you some kind of the idea, some perceptions will come out from the inductive. And here you can go for the some kind of the uh, contain and disclose analysis. Basically, it is a qualitative based on and then it is a quantitative. Any other question? Next question. Hello. Sir, how can humanities qualitative research can be done in multivitaric way? Humanities. Uh, Humanities qualitative research, how can humanities qualitative research can be done in multivariate way? Okay. Okay. So, uh, humanities qualitative research uh, not directly can come out with the multivariate analysis, but sometimes uh, you can have the qualitative research. So, let's say I can give you the example of the the media research so if it is you are uh, looking after the news in a newspaper so newspaper uh, uh, analysis is uh, nothing but it is a qualitative research so qualitative research can be uh, giving you a sort of the some narrative or you just come out with the come um, come out with the narrative but you parallelly you can also see that if it is let's say i'm looking on the front page of the any newspaper and then i will be identifying that that news is based on the uh, based on the politicals or it is a uh, based on the social news uh, it is a uh, based on uh, some kind of the economicus news so these kind of the criteria can be created so if it is i'm creating one column which, which tell about the it is types of the uh, news and it is the uh, second column can be created this news based on the some based on the some political party or based on the some other uh, things so this kind of the classification can be done but uh, you can uh, do some kind of the uh, cross tabulation and uh, uh, not exactly multivariate analysis but you can uh, see this multiple variable analysis can be done 
in case of the if you are converting this kind of the analysis into the contain analysis so this is called the basically a contain analysis so you are uh, having the some contain and then you can convert it into the some category according to your research questions so that is the uh, i think contain analysis can be done sir another query is can we relate quantitative research to survey research is the methodology methodology similar to experimental research not ex uh, not exactly but if it is you uh, <laughs> survey research is a different one because the in the experimental research you will be selecting something random okay and you have the some uh, experimental conducted in experimental research sir. but the but if you uh, want to create some uh, survey research it can be it can be developed in case of the experimental research next question please sir no more further queries okay hello parul are you here yes sir i am here pankaj sir pankaj yeah pankaj so any other questions or should up yes sir so do we have a break or should we continue sir it uh, we should take break uh, uh, it is according to you there is a 30 minutes break so it depends on the resource person when he will take no this uh, okay this first session is done then uh, we can uh, take a break and then after that we can come back after one time. yes we can join at 1:30 now sir you can break okay okay
सर कैन वी स्टार्ट विद दिस सेशन मनोज सर yeah we can start uh, before starting with the session there is small announcement for the participants there are very various queries in the chat box regard, regarding the attendance so uh, regarding the attendance there will be no link which is to be shared but uh, uh, we'll be taking the attendance uh, through your uh, participants name so all of you are requested to please rename your name because we are receiving uh, various names as anonymous attendees so all the participants are requested to rename their name so that we can mark their attendance i hope this is clear to everyone there will again i am repeating there will be no link regarding the attendance we'll be taking on our own we have a attendance sheet and we will mark the attendance based on your name shown, shown in the participants list so please rename yourself and any communication regarding the attendance or anything will be deal on telegram channel no query regarding attendance or anything except doubt will be entertained in the chat box thank you and all of you please join our google classroom those who have not joined please join it okay sir you can continue okay thank you thank you parul so can we start now yes sir uh before i will start i would like uh, if you have more questions uh from the research or types of the research then you can ask So we have certain questions in the chat box or question and answer session. Uh, Can I read, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, shall I start with the first one? yeah so just a minute so have you answered the previous one because it's showing answer 9 nine. nine answers questions 
question number nine. No, no, sir. There are uh, thirteen questions out of which it's showing that nine has been answered. Or shall I start with the first one? Yes, ma'am. Sir answered. I conveyed the mess uh, questions to sir, and sir was like answering the questions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, can you please tell me from where I have to start? Ma'am, the three questions which are there, na, the in the open one, okay. only that questions are left. Others have been answered. I think historical research is narrative. From here, I think I have to start. Mom, from what is discourse analysis from there? Okay, okay, okay. Sir, uh, first one is what is discourse analysis? Okay, uh, discourse analysis is the um, one of the uh, analysis which can be uh, come out from the qualitative or uh, some text is uh, with the researcher or they are referring to the any historical document or they are. Uh, uh looking the some of the uh, uh text document then it's what should be the disc disclosure of that do documents means uh, how you can say that uh, it can be a part of the any political uh, let's say i'm taking the any newspaper so then what is the discourse of this one so discourse means uh, what reveals the, that particular uh, paragraph revealed about the any political news or its uh, social news or any something so it's uh, giving uh, you need to give the uh, some brief uh, narrative about the some text and then you need to analyze those uh, document that is the uh, discourse analysis so sometimes you can also go for the content analysis so content analysis uh, give you some kind of the category and then you can just uh, go for the some descriptive statistics or some graphs for the analysis purpose okay, sir. second question is sir if the data is very huge what can be the best practice to analyze the same so uh, this is the uh, the question is very vague so how uh, you can uh, you need to define the vague oh, sorry how uh, you need to define the what is the big data or huge data okay so suppose uh, you are having the qualitative data or it's a quantitative or uh, i mean to say that your data is in the, in which forms it is a nominal ordinal interval and ratio so if it is your data is uh, in whatever form accordingly you can plan for the further analysis so uh, i think you will be going enough uh, in coming sessions about the how you can handle the huge data set but don't uh, uh, ask the very generic things it's very uh, you need to ask the your problems if it is uh, you are having yeah next is can we do the quantitative and qualitative res research together yeah you uh, you can do the quantitative and qualitative research together i uh, missed this i think um, this uh, research so one of the type of the research is the mixed research which is the combination of the qualitative research and the quantitative research so once uh, this i think uh, i think if i'm uh, not wrong then it uh, this kind of the research emerged after the i think 2015 or onwards so if it is you can also go for the qualitative and quantitative research in a one um, one umbrella okay so whatever is your topic then you can go ahead with the this mixed research so that is called the mixed research uh, next question experimental research and action research sound more or less the same as we resolving a problem in both the cases and what is the key differentiation features between the both so experimental research is uh, have a certain conditions so i told you that uh, we are uh, finding the vaccine for the covid 19 so this is 
uh, have a certain um, certain um, experimental uh, environmental is uh, experimental environment is required for the experimental research so let's say you uh, have to have uh, deal with the uh, healthy patients then after healthy uh, volunteers then after that you will go for the patients of the covid 19 so this is a certain scenario uh, but if we talk about the action research action research is something which uh, deals about the some educational or descriptive description of some educational policies and the, the documents and the courses so sort of this will give you the ex um, research is a cert certain kind of the problem which is exists in a let's say in administration i give you an example of the let's say the students are went for the strike then how you will will be uh, how you can um, uh, call for the regular classes and all so this is the you need uh, the administration and the registrar office needs a resolution of this thing that can be done with the uh, excel research so we have uh, one more question in the uh, chat box so how uh, the differentiation content analysis and discourse analysis so discourse will tell about the some narrative uh, differences so it's give you the small narrative of the the text whichever you are uh, referring and then content analysis it's classify your data into the categorical uh, form so it's creating the some categorical variable so this is the uh, differences Is there any question? I'm just looking at the chat box. Okay, quantity. Um, if few existing literature is available, so how we uh, we can develop the hypothesis? Kindly discuss uh, this thing. So uh, let's say uh, something. Uh, you talk about the. Let's say I talk about the COVID nineteen research. Uh, uh, carried out this period okay so you don't have any uh, any any information about the uh, the covid 19 when the people are publishing their article in the month of the uh, march and the april okay so uh, how they are bringing out so this uh, you can't say that ki you don't have a, any existing literature so if we talk about the covid 19 information is not available in the past but if it is uh, such kind of the virus came in the uh, past you can refer those uh, data also or those uh, articles you can refer for the further exploration otherwise you can start with the some of the your own hypothesis so whatever your area so maybe you will be dealing with the uh, uh, this uh, the uh, impact of, on economy or something so something you can find from the literature so not in the in, in exactly in this aspect but in different aspect to, you definitely find it uh the group is not allowed okay next question there are no more questions okay so all question is over Hello. Any other question, participants? No more questions. So we have a question. Mm -hmm. What is evaluation research? So evaluation research is basically uh, it is the uh, evaluation of a certain uh, things. For example, if we uh, see the government is uh, putting money in the Aishman uh, Aishman uh, Jan Aarogya Yojana Bima, so how the government wants to know that how much that scheme is uh, uh, is implemented, how much. 
what is the progress of that schemes so you need to do for the uh, you need to do the evaluation of that research so evaluation can be carried out in a, some part of that particular uh, particular schemes and then you can say that this is the progress or this is the evaluation of that is schemes another example if you talk about the large sample survey which uh, carried out uh, by the uh, by the Ministry of the Health or the IAPS, Indian International Institute of Population Sciences. So they are con conducting large sample surveys for India and government. Okay, so in that case, uh, still we needs to look uh, the what is the uh, evaluation of those surveys. So the surveys conducted by the IAPS, but the other people, other agencies is also looking for the evaluation. So they are just looking that whatever they are collecting the data or whatever they are carrying the other activities, the, uh, what is the what is the progress of that activity? So this kind of the evaluations can be um, uh, done, uh, or this kind of the evaluation is called as the evaluation research. So one more question. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between evaluation and empirical research? Empirical research, uh, once we talk about the, uh, uh, we, it's a sort of the, uh, we are seeing the impact of something. So impact of, let's say, we just want to see the impact of the, some new policies uh, uh, given by the university uh, to the students okay so some uh, facilities given to the students so how uh, that uh, empiric uh, what is the uh, effect of that schemes that can be uh, seen and we already discussed about the evaluation research so evaluation research is nothing but it is the evaluating these uh, ongoing these some activities some uh, schemes then you need to evaluate those all longitudinal and panel data so uh, longitudinal and panel data is nothing but it is the uh, you are having the uh, different time intervals data which can be carried out a uh, uh, let's say uh, it is the part of the commerce and economics so a lot of the economics people are uh, carrying out the uh, longitudinal analysis so longitudinal analysis can be done in a different parts okay so it's let's say the we are having the one assessment at the at uh, in the month of the december then next will be after the uh, may and then after the every six we are having the certain uh, period so this is a uh, call as the longitudinal data. Next, can I start with the next question? Yeah. Is narrative research is a kind of quantitative research? Narrative, uh, it's a part of, narr uh, narrative is a part of the quantitative research. So narrative, uh, it's a uh, one of the way of interpretation one uh, one of the way of the interpretation of the qualitative research is the narrative analysis means you need to perform the narrative analysis so it's on uh, narrative research is not a right word it is a narrative analysis which will be carried out in the quantitative research sorry qualitative research next question yeah uh, It's a... So, no more questions. Uh, one more question came. What is I the guess. sample size? Uh, sample size, uh, as I will be recalling the uh, research process. So, uh, in the research process, first was the identification of the, your problem or the, your topics. Then after that, review of the literatures and then study design. So inside of the study design, we always talk about the, or you must have heard about the, what is the methodology of your re research, okay? So in, inside of the methodology, you must talk about the sample size. So sample size estimation is the, one of the important aspect of any research means how much uh, parchment you will be uh, involving in your research. So it is the experimental or it is the uh, non-experimental, then it is the 
uh, you need to require the sample size calculation. So uh, there are these some uh, basic rules for calculation of the sample size in the social sciences. Those research which are uh, not based on the probability, so based not based on the probability, they are having some assumption of the thumb rule. So five percent of the population, and uh, you must know what is your population. Then after that, you need to bring out the sum of the thumb rule and some uh, thumb rule of five to ten percent, depend on the topic to topic or the what is the your area of the research. Other one is the you must have the any objective. Suppose that I just want to see that is there any differences between the uh, average marks of the JNU student and the DU student. So how much student I will be en enrolling uh, for my research. Okay, so how much sample size I will be requiring? So I will be uh, looking the average marks of the both the universities of the Delhi and the JNU. So in that case, uh, I am having the one uh, measurement that is the average marks of the students. So this average can be done with the help of the mean, uh, mean, uh, mean, and uh, you can say that it is, it can be done with the help of the t test. So uh, for the t test, there is a specific formula of the sample size estimations. So I will be using the standard deviations of this uh, these parameter, and this can be get it from the past research or past articles or from the reports. So these past information can be uh, gathered for the sample size calculation, or you can do the pilot study. So pilot study means a small kind of the study which carried on the uh, lesser than twenty to thirty um, subjects. And then you can uh, able to estimate the sample size because sample size estimation is a very big topic, which required. But it's basic thing is that you must have the objective. Then corresponding sample size formula will be there. You will find from the uh, literatures. So a lot of the things is available on the sample size. So next question. Optimize and optimize for optimization is carried out in which phase of research process? Example, example. Optimizations um, uh, is not. Uh, I'm not getting you uh, in what sense uh, you want to. So it can be uh, definitely it will be uh, carried out in the phase of the statistical analysis. So optimization of what things? It depend on the optimization of your objective, your data, or whatever you want to uh, uh, get it. So it depend on you. And uh, basically, you will be doing in the case in the time of the statistical analysis. Narrative analysis. Narrative analysis is a sort of uh, uh, you give the uh, narration of any text. Suppose that uh, Modi speech is given in a Bihar elections. Okay, so what was the narrative of that one? So how you can say that uh, this uh, uh, this speech is given. Uh, on what basis or what are the uh, reflecting point? Okay, so you give the sort of the some narrative analysis means some uh, brief uh, about that speech which is given by the Modi election in a Bihar. How to prepare the questionnaire regarding the survey research? Example: If we want to find the effect of the COVID on the situation and earnings of the artist in a music field and what are the different way to do the this type of the research oh this is a, a good question so you want to create the questionnaires okay in during um, for the survey research so you want to explore that uh, how the impact on the earnings of the artist okay so you need to uh, create the set of the some demographic variable and then after that your main variable which is uh, telling about the effect of the covid on the earnings of the uh, artist so you need to uh, uh, need to ask the some of the questions as i know uh, because i can be do one study which can tell the what is the before of the covid what was the income of that artist and what is the income during this COVID-19. So let's say you can also take the um, income in the month of the April, in the income in the month of the uh, July, then after that something. So you can uh, create the, this is the one question which can give the answer of your uh, objective. And furthermore, there are the so many questions which can be asked in the form of the, uh, uh, in the form of the nominal or interval in, or in ratio form also. So it's depend on you how you can want to design it.
there is a question in the chat box. What is cohort research? Uh, cohort research is a, a research which carried out in a particular uh, uh, set of the location or set of uh, people. Let's say uh, somewhere the people, uh, the kinder people are uh, staying in a, some particular places. Some uh, poor people in, uh, living in any part of the Delhi location. So this is the one of the cohort where the especially the poor people are living in that area. So I am just considering that this is the my cohort. So you can also uh, uh, explain that it is a part of the, your cohort study. Um, whether they're taking a different location or the population for any research done earlier in the is valid for the research gap. Yeah, but it is a one of the uh, uh, it is a valid gap, but it is giving you the uh, finding out the what is the your uh, uh, sample and the populations to know about the your sample and uh, population, but it will not telling about the your objective. So what is your objective? That is the more important aspect rather than this one. So next, uh, does the contain analysis, uh, analysis, uh, contain analysis qualitative or quantitative or it's both. So contain analysis can be performed where you are having the some text and that text can be uh, classify in a some category. So it can go for the qualitative research only. So we have one more question. Okay. So how can we can decide the sample size of research where we are not aware about population size? See, uh, <clears throat> One thing is that you can go for the pilot survey. You can conduct uh, your uh, problems on, let's say, 15 to 30, 40 subjects. And then after that, you will get some results. And then you can plan for the, your broader study or your, your main study. This is the one options. If you don't have this population size, then um, you can uh, you can go for the some of the uh, rule of uh, you must define what is the populations where you want to conduct it then accordingly you can also think you can go for the sum of the 500 subjects so definitely what is your objective and how much uh, uh, let's say if it is i am looking something which is telling about the academic of uh, achievement of the student so i don't know uh, how many students are in the university but you can see that if it is, I just want to see the average of the student student marks. So in uh, for that statistical techniques, how much sample size will be requiring? So this can be alternative way. So this is the second way. Third way is that you need to uh, go for the some of the random uh, good figure or some uh, good number of the samples so that you can also carry it out. For example, 400 to 500 subjects, you can also go ahead. If it is uh, your, uh, what is the your problem, according to this? So there are, there can be three, uh, four options which you can carry it for this sample size. If you don't have the population size. <clears throat> so can we take one more question? Okay. So yeah, yeah. Questionnaire. Uh, the question is established questionnaire or own questionnaire is best for behavioral studies. Oh, so this is. Uh, I, I cannot say which one is the best. Uh, suppose uh, some of the questionnaire is well developed or some of the skill is well developed. And then uh, what is your idea? You just want to uh, basically focus on those uh, 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 those uh, criteria or those scale only, or you, you are having some um, uh, good idea to bring out the more uh, criteria, basically more dimension you want to bring out which is not addressed in the previous uh, um, stabilized questionnaires, then you can uh, bring out your questionnaire also. If you have some idea, then you can bring out your. So this is my uh, suggestion, but even you can also look uh, in that area, respective area, what you can do best. So next question. What is the difference between opinion poll and survey? 
Uh, I'm not sure about this thing, but opinion poll, uh, I, opinion poll is, uh, let's say if it is, uh, I'm meeting to the one of the, um, you know, one of the group, which is uh, situated in uh, that uh, area, then what is the opinion on those peoples? Okay. And uh, it is, uh, again, a part of the survey. So how it will be conducted? This will be conducted through the uh, focus group discussion or maybe uh, some interview questionnaire. And it is, a, again, a part of the survey. So survey agency is conducting the opinion poll survey. Last question. <laughs> uh, what are the factors affecting research design? So uh, what factors affecting the research design? So research design may be impacted by the, uh, what is the size of the population and what are the other factors, which is uh, means, uh, for example, uh, if it is you are collecting some data, but uh, you will not getting the appropriate number of the responses. And uh, so this can be a one uh, factor which can uh, affecting so there are the many factors is available, which you can see. And the size is also depend the location of the response and what kind of the uh, data collection you are using. That can be a one of the part of this. Uh, five point scale or seven point scale is better. So it's uh, depend on the what kind of the research you are conducting. So is your questions can be judged through the five point scale or seven point scale. You need to think for that. So whatever I'm asking, so that can be judged betterly by the uh, uh, five scale or seven scale. And parallelly, you need to also think that uh, how you can analyze those scales. So betterly, you can analyze five scale or seven scale. Accordingly, you can plan. Take few more questions, sir, or we can start with this session. Okay, we can take two, three questions. Okay, sir. One question is Can we mix qualitative and quantitative data and make some research report? Um, as I told you earlier, uh, there is a one uh, research which is a mixed research which is a combination of the qualitative and quantitative research. As you are uh, dealing with the qualitative or quantitative research, then you must be having the qualitative data and quantitative data. So on the basis of these two, so you uh, make uh, some of the uh, interpretation or uh, uh, you can uh, tell about the more about the those variable, those parameters based on the these two kind of the data that you can do. Now we can start. Yes, okay. yes, sir. There are no more questions. I guess we can start. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. It's uh, visible. It says data uh, analysis of concept indicator variables and data. Okay, so now I can start with the data. And uh, the concept of the indicators variable. 
uh, basically concept indicator variable and data is the uh, four different pillar of uh, to knowing about the any so how you uh, uh, how you can understand the uh, understand the measurement of a data how you come out about the measurement of any uh, data so basically it's coming from the concept to uh, so you must have some concept so concept means that you must have the some kind of the problems uh, for the your research things so uh, this concept can be uh, have uh, some indicators <coughs> for example some indicators will be there so indicators can be uh, tell about that uh, you can easily uh, find out uh, the answer of your concept by the indicator so there can be more than one indicators about the any concept so for example uh, i can tell you i just want to do the research on the covid 19 so uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, what you call uh, how you identify the person having the COVID-19. Uh, COVID so what are the indicators? So first indicator is that if uh, uh, if the person is having the high fever, so it can be the one of the indicator. If he's a problem in the, uh, uh, in, the uh, in the body, or if we have uh, some problem of the cough, or he's having the problem of the uh, this uh, cough and uh, uh, all this, uh, uh, problem of the, in the throat so these are the all indicators okay so these indicators can can be the telling about the concept of any problem of the covid 19 so this way you can also understand the what are the indicators of any problem similarly you need to define what is the your concept so how these concept can be bring bring us the many indicators so indicators can be uh, uh, done in the different manners then after that uh, uh, variables so these indicators can be uh, associated with the one of the variable one variables so these variable uh, after that measure with the help of the some data or it will come with the some data so uh, that's why we are here uh, listening about the measurement of the data and how the what are the types of the data in your research so basically i am telling about the these uh, things for the uh, for the data okay so i am also giving you one more example about the uh, data so uh, do you know how to assess the uh, the performance of a student i think um, uh, you all are uh, uh, the faculty and you may be going to be a, a, a professor in some other day so uh, how you find that the performance of a uh, performance of a student so what are the indicators will be required so for example uh, the first indicator that how much he marks got in any exams how many presentation uh, done by the that participant that uh, students okay so how he actively uh, participated in the uh, physical uh, activities and how he involved in the uh, other kind of the competitions so there are the four five indicators six seven indicators is there from uh, from there you can identify that these are the my indicators and the corresponding variable will be there okay and then corresponding data will be there so this is the very good way to understand the most of the students are asking that uh, uh, how we able to uh, get the uh, variable how we will get the data what kind of the uh, uh, data we will get from this uh, uh, this uh, topic so this is the very uh, uh, very vague question but if you are thinking in that this is the my problem this is the my concept of the research then what should be the indicators how we will get into the field suppose if uh, i just want to see that uh, 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 there is some economical problem uh, i think there are the, some south uh, south asian countries who sign for the uh, 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 open economy okay so there is a some uh, oh, oh, but the modi is uh, was not signed that agreement uh, uh, among these uh, south uh, asian country so why he not signed what are the indicators what are the impact on that so you need to tell about the indicators so that indicators it will be good for our economy it good for our industry it will good for them also so you need to find out the some uh, indicators so these indicators will uh, 
lastly go convert into the variable convert into the some question questions then after that you have a set of the data so i am going to start with the the concept of the indicator so what are the indicators so let's say whatever the problem is you defining so maybe you are having the first objective second objective of your research so that's put in in the form of the uh, concept so what are the concept is telling about so it is telling about the uh, x concept y concept so that accordingly you will tell about the indicators okay so till now we uh, you already know that research process in the last session we discussed about the research process so research process is nothing but it is morely uh, related with the the in uh, the uh, from the uh, identification of the problem then after that uh, you might be telling about the what are the review of the literature so review once you will be doing the review of the literatures then it means that you are finding out the some of the indicators some of the gaps between these uh, these uh, uh, re review of the literatures so that you are just finding out so it is are uh, related with the research process and then you will be once you know that these are the my indicators this can be i can do in my research and i can work on these indicators then after that along along to this you can go for the some of the variables and data okay so concept of and construct and the variables so the concept and construct is uh, are often used interchangeably and both are the considered as the theoretical abstraction and however these are the different between the two so basically this is nothing but it is the just looking out the what are the your problem and how you can differentiate theoretically and the practically also if it is it depend on the your study to study then accordingly you will say that it is a my theoretical problems it is a my uh, theoretical concept and whatever the concept it is so concept uh, basically what's this concept so broad generalizations and it is easily stays of the theorizing you can easily theorize uh, it and boundaries are not sharply drawn okay so the boundary is is available for you and for example the age and the employment and relationship is the one of the the concept for the particular problem construct uh, is the concept that uh, systematically defined to be a uh, to be us in a scientific theory okay and <coughs> formal scientific concept are is a, is in the theoretical research <coughs> so this is the uh, cooperativeness drawing about the it's uh, it can be a, your theoretical perspective and it is related to the governance okay so the <clears throat> these are the concept and indicator as the the part of the conceptualizations okay so what are the your problems and what are the indicators are there so this is the part of the conceptualization and operationalization operationalization means how you will get that informations so you must have the some of the variable you must have the some of the questions which you you can ask in the field so this is the operationalize and what kind of the data you will get so these are the uh, uh, the uh, the variables and the data is come into the operationalizations so <clears throat> conceptualization involve the concept formation which establishes the meaning of a construct and define the important sub domains of its meaning so basically if let's say if you are doing the any behavioral research or you doing the any psycho psychological research or managemential research then you must have the some of the concept and then can be constructed in a different ways and operationalizing is a transformation or it is a translations of the theoretical constraint into the observational variable so th whatever the concept and the construct uh, the theoretical construct will be there that you need to find out with the indicators so we need to operationalize these operationalize means you need to most of the theoretical concept are the abstract not directly observable so in that case you need uh, some kind of the um, the operationalization now translating the theoretical concept into the 
proper indicators so for example the the research question and the building the hypothesis so this is the your first stage where you need to uh, <coughs> for the bringing out the uh, proper indicators and then uh, you need to conceptual definition elaborating the concept and defining the important and dimension of its and meaning so there can be a more than one dimension also okay so operationalized definition choosing the indicator translating the conceptual content for the each indicator in an actual and survey questions in the stage one you need to tell about the what are the your research questions and the what is the uh, corresponding hypothesis so you need to write the what are the your questions so according to the whatever your indicators you saw in the your concepts okay so uh, in the second stage you are just elaborating the what are the concept and the importance of these all dimensions so the, these dimension uh, maybe a uh, um, uh, one concept has the more than one dimension third one is the uh, you need to see the indicators and the variables so these are the set of criteria reflect about the concept and this is the concept may be a uh, measurable okay so this concept of uh, these indicators can be measurable and these measurable uh, in the form of the variable in the form of the questions and these variables can be a part of the one category so this category is nothing but these are the level of measurement so means what is the this thing what is the nominal it is a nominal it is a ordinal interval and ratio that's you need to tell so basically we uh, till now we talk about the concept indicator and variable okay so you can take a one, one of the example let's uh, i already given you two three example in the very beginning but uh, suppose you want to uh, look the rich richness of the any uh, any society or any peoples so uh, how you can uh, know the word uh, who are the rich in that society so you will be looking out the what are the indicators for the to know the it is a rich uh, rich concept okay this can be uh, got it from the these two indicator one is the income and the assets okay we can also take how many uh, uh, vehicles he has okay so these are the luxuries cars he has so these are the uh, other indicators which we can also consider but here i am taking only the two the income and the assets and then you talk about the variable so variables is income per year so how much the income he is getting per year and the total value of the property minus the liability so just we uh, intersect that how much he is having the total value of their properties okay so uh, this is the way of uh, creating the concept indicator and variable and then after that immediately we talk about the the measurement of the variables and meanwhile i will be discussing about the types of the variables so lot of the people are asking that uh, what is the independent variable dependent variable and confounding variable and control variable so independent variable is nothing but the variable uh, which is impacting something some uh, outcome variables that is impacting it so uh, so let's say the student achievement can be impacted by the parental education the the uh, center the types of the universities which uh, from where he is studying so the independent variable is the the parental education so what are the parents education this is the one uh, independent variable and if we talk about the the types of the university is the another independent variable so this is called the your independent variable now we talk about the dependent variable so how you can define the dependent variable which is the outcome variable basically it is a outcome variable and outcome variable can be uh, understood as a the achievement of the student mark okay so achievement of the student mark depend on the parental education and the uh, uh, the types of the university so i can see that this is the my outcome variable this is the the impacted variable who is impacted by the by the parent education or by the 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 types of the institutions if we studying from the jnu if we studying from the jn du or delhi school of economics or we studying from the kanpur university 
university bhu so what types of the university it is so it's basically it's impacting on the achievement now confounding variable so confounding variable which is also uh, one of the variable which is not uh, it is a supporting variable so maybe this will be happening due to the uh, is the 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 person is the from the rural and urban area so and there is a um, maybe a one of the cause in finding the relationship between the dependent and independent variable so that is the your confounding variable okay so this once you will be having the complex designs then you will be using the confounding variable if you if you see there are the uh, agriculture scientists they are not using the some kind of the confounding variable and similarly if you talk about the uh, medical people scientists they are also using the confounding variables and after that control variable control variable which cannot be changed which has the same impact in all whatever the scenario is giving so we are not giving to the uh, anything to the control variable that is the uh, control variable so again i am going back to the uh, this independent variable this is the, the, the proposed cause and the predictor variable uh, the parental education is predicting the other variable okay so dependent variable is the proposed effect or an outcome variable so this is the proposed effect here and it is a an out outcome variable okay so this is the these two types that is independent and dependent variable now we talk about the confounding variable or it is also called the interfering variables okay so confounding variable are those that are very systematically with independent variable and accept influences of the dependent variable so this is the parallelly going with the dependent variable that can be a one of the types a uh, confounding variable confounding variable are the not principal interest of the study they distorts the results of the study okay so let's say i can give you very good example about the confounding uh, variable let's say we uh, we will say that the covid 19 can be um, treated with the any vaccine okay let's say one uh, vaccine is came in the market that is a vaccine x is there and it is saying that the the uh, the pharmaceutical people saying that this vaccine is treating of the covid 19 but uh, along with this they are interested that If the person is the patient is having if it is he is having some uh, asthma problem is there then it may be a uh, he want to see that what is the impact of if any person is having that kind of the problem then it is it is assumed to be a part of the uh, confounding variable so in that sense you can also understand this is not a my main criteria to uh, to make the decision about the vaccine but it can be a one of the uh, the confounding variable then after that control variable control variable the variable that is not change okay so if you uh, uh, if you seen the few of the experimental in the experimental research so there are the some of the people are keeping the uh, the treatment variable and the another one is the control variable so we are controlling we are not giving the any kind of the medicines to the those people who are are called as the control variable okay and we are for the other people we are giving the medications to the other people okay so this is the things which we will be doing in case of the control variable the and i will be taking an example of the temperature of the water was measured at the different depth of the part of the rivers so this uh, depth of the water is the your independent variable okay and dependent variable is the temperature and the control variable is the thermometer so maybe some error might be there some uh, what is the uh, other uh, valid validation results of the uh, thermometer so this can be a one of the confounding variable now we talk about the level of measurement so we till now we discuss about the uh, types of the variable so these variables must 
uh, every variable has the some measurement okay so it can be measured in the nominal form it ordinal form or interval and ratio in any sense it will be measures okay so let's see how it can be done so there was so we discuss about the so yeah. sorry to interrupt here we have uh, some questions i th i thought they are related to whatever you've taught so far so would yeah. you like to take up over here them sir yeah, yeah. Uh, so question number 1 says uh, please explain about snowball sampling okay another says if what if is indicator is not measurable okay good. let me uh, answer the first question so right, snowball may be clear once you will be uh, uh, learning the sampling and populations but i can tell you the uh, snowball sampling is but uh, once you are selecting the sample from the population okay so this is the non probability based sampling if uh, uh, the it is a non probability based sampling once uh, we talk about the snowball sampling so in the snowball sampling we don't have the um, we don't have the much details about the my sample okay so how i will get so let's say who are the uh, um addicted i just want to do the study on the uh, study on something where i don't have the uh, details about the my population or i don't have the uh, sampling frame so what i will do i just find out the few of the subjects and the, from those subject i i might be getting the more details about the uh, or uh, more details about the new respondent okay then i'm going to the next respondent based on the uh, uh, reference given by the previous respondent okay so again i am getting the more respondent through these by the link so this is called the snowball sampling what was the next question uh, so the next question says if what if the indicator is not measurable indicator is not measurable measurable question mark so then in that case what to do i mean okay so uh you need to think that the indicator must be a measurable no? either uh, you will say that this indicator is, is uh, um, present in the some form of no? okay, how you will be uh, getting this information really you will find uh, any research so you can give the any kind of the research uh, wherever you do doing any kind of the research you will must have this some kind of the indicators if you can start from the any discipline then you must have the some indicators means indicators can come from the your objectives you can't say that okay, you don't have the indicators for this one it means okay. that you need uh, more uh, 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 more discussion within your peer teams okay within a uh, scientist group so you can discuss with this you might be getting the indicators all right sir uh, we have one last question uh, it says can you please uh, explain uh, confounding variables again a uh, confounding variable is uh, i given the example of the uh, i am measuring the temperature in a, any uh, so i am taking in the depth so what are the independent variable dependent variable but the thermometers so whatever the uh, the problems is come uh, come due to the uh, some uh, thermometers then it will be a confounding variable so majorly it is not directly influent um, directly um, what you call uh, it's not impacting directly to the my dependent variable but it is the part of the my independent variable so that is called the your confounding variable okay. thank you sir uh, so no more questions sir you can proceed with the session control variable again you can control variable if you heard about the uh, placebo or treatment study so this is the basically done in the experimental research so in experimental research what we are doing so uh, the one subject is having the treatment so suppose that you want to see that impact of the covid 
you want to see the impact of the covid 19 no, sorry you want to see what is the impact of the online teaching let's say we are opening the some institutions where the students are coming uh, to the schools and even we are providing the online teachings so what is the impact so we are not providing any um, any technology or anything to the some of the people and other is we are providing some kind of the treatment we can we are providing some kind of the technology so that is we are giving some uh, uh, some uh, intervention is we are giving okay some guidelines we are giving to the one set of the people and other set of the people we are not giving the any kind of the information so that is the we control that variable we are not giving any yeah that's it sir you can continue with this session okay okay so this is uh, i already discussed about the uh, emergence of the uh, level of the measurement so this uh, dimension or the concept is the some conceptualization definitions where we will be telling about the what are the concepts in your uh, research and how what are the dimension what are the uh, dimension are there in the your research then after that we will talk about the indicators okay so indicators uh, may be a variables indicators uh, uh, will leads to be a variable a variable is nothing but whatever the questions you are asking in that uh, in that research that is the, your variables that variable can be uh, asked in the uh, in the your laboratory or maybe in the field so it is the depend on you and then after that once you will be saying this is the category this kind of the things is coming out So level of measurement uh, can be divided into two parts. One is the categorical, another is the continuous. Okay. So categorical is the nothing but it is a, a divided into, into the distinct category. So basically it's nothing but the whatever the information is coming that is in the sub criteria, some category is there. Okay, so whatever the information is coming, that is in the some category. Okay, so these category can be defined uh, if you uh, broadly uh, heard about the nominal and ordinal. So there are the the categories which coming uh, categories coming that is the nominal and uh, ordinal one. But we can elaborate more here. Is the one is the binary variable. There are only the two category means any person in the hospital who dead or alive. Okay, so this is the binary variable. So binary, binary variable where the, the outcome is only two, two possibilities are there. So let's say you are saying that yes and no. Okay, survive, not survive. Okay, fail and pass. So these are, there are the two outcomes. So this is the uh, binary variable and then nominal variable. Nominal variable is this uh, the binary variable is the subset of the uh, nominal variable so are the more than two categories so more than two categories whether whether the someone is the omnivore uh, vegetarian vegan and the fruit eater okay so these are the different categories are there so nominal months you will be saying uh, the person is illiterate or it's a secondary uh, uh, educated and uh, it is undergraduate it is a postgraduate so there are the different categories are there so this is the your nominal one so most of the time if you are having the category in the demographic variable that come uh, in the form of the nominal one okay next is the ordinal variable so ordinal variable it, it is nothing but it is the again giving you a category but in a some diff, uh, some order some order must be uh, there so this is the, the same as the nominal variable, but 
but it has these some category. So category means there is some uh, equal differences between their responses. Mm -hmm. For example, the first division, second division, third division, and fourth division. So this is the one example where you can see this is the ordinal variable. So these are the very important. You always look into the back to the, your objective. So your objective must be there and then corresponding um, what do you call your uh, questions will be there in a questionnaire. So that question, each questions can you give can gives you uh, nominal data, ordinal data, or, uh, interval data, and ratio data. If you do this for every questions, definitely you will have a the very good idea, very good idea in the very end of the your research because there is a very important aspect. Once you be knowing that what things is giving in what form. Then you can easily decide about the your statistical analysis. Now we talk about the continuous, and it is the distinct score. So basically, the continuous variable it's, it is giving you a distinct score. So interval variable equal intervals on the variable represent equal differences. The prop six and eight is equivalent to the difference between the 13 and 15. Okay, so this is the uh, interval scale and then ratio variable, the same as the interval variable. Same as the interval variable, but there is a ratio score on this approximately, or we talk about the height and weight of the subject or the students. So this is the and part of uh, the continuous variable. So there are the two categories. One is the categorical data and continuous data. Similarly, you can also divide this is the uh, like qualitative data and this is the quantitative data. Parul, can we address the questions? Yes, sir. Uh, there is one question. How can measure level of teaching in online made during COVID-19? How can measure the level of teaching? Yes. How can we measure the level of teaching in online mode during COVID-19? I think you all are giving the uh, measuring the te teachings. You are having the uh, rating scales are there. You are you can you after this, I think every seminar you need to rate the each speakers. OK, so this is the uh, uh, it is the fully deliver the um, content, fully deliver the the process of the teaching. So whatever you can ask, that can be addressed in that. The another query is uh, which statistical method to be used for binary dependent and independent variables. So again, this question is not properly asked, but still I think uh, that uh, participant wants to know that if it is the he ha he or she has the binary dependent variable, so means if he, he wants to apply the logistic regression or if uh, he's having the uh, such kind of the variable, then he can go for the logistic regression. Uh, Sivani uh, asked about the ratio variable. Uh, we more discuss about the ratio variable. So wait till next one. So gender is the which types of the variable uh, for the transferring to the spaces. It is a nominal variable. So some software may be understanding it is a um, means there are the two possible uh, two possibilities male and female then it is a binary if it is there are the uh, male female and transgender then it is coming to the uh, binary category oh, sorry nominal category uh, can we use the binary variable for ANOVA no, you must have the continuous variable for analysis of variance means you are comparing the mean value of two or more than two groups. So there must be a, some groups 
and but it should be a continuous variable. It means that no, ratio and interval data uh, kind of data will be there. What is the difference between the nominal and ordinal? This we will be coming in the next slide. So we already told you, but still it is coming. So this is the other uh, slides where you can understand the uh, data in the form of the nominal scale or in known metric space and it is a metric space. What is happening here? You are having the uh, you are having the some scale is there. So from that scale, you are taking the sum of the value. For example, if it is I'm talking about the the uh, the age of the persons, age of the students. So age can be taken out from the zero to hundred. Okay, so any value can be taken out. So it it is a kind of the one scale between the zero to hundred, and any value can be. Uh, taken out okay and non metric it is a non metric means it is the uh, just some kind of the category can be assigned to the no nominal scale or ordinal scale okay so nominal means having the two three four category and ordinarily having the some order is there and then there is a some uh, category is there so this is the non metric and metric also but you don't uh, look into the if you are not much comfortable then you no, do not look into the metric and non metric but you can understand broadly this is the nominal ordinal and interval and scale uh, ratio data so uh, sort of the if it is you are having the non metric scale or you are having metric scale then what kind of the things what is it so it is basically classifications of quantitative characteristics okay so you can do the classification you are just saying that these are the classifying that the gender okay so you are saying that these much of the male and these much of the female so you can uh, draw uh, the frequency and the mode for the these kind of the variable ordinal it is a just a order classification and order is there okay and this uh, you can do the rank value order relationship Okay, mild, moderate, severe is there. So the, it is a one of the example. Rank order and the quanti quantile and mediate you can use for the to find the average uh, of this value. Interval ratio it is a classification order and distance. So equality of the interval arbitrary zero points. Okay, here you can also have the value zero, but it has the some value. Addition and subtraction and mean you can perform what you can do in this case and ratio the classification order distance and natural origin so equality of the intervals absolute zero point addition subtractor and multiplication you can perform okay so this is the all about the uh, So another slides, which again telling you about the nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio. So this is uh, in the first part, of first quadrant. You will see that the classification, but no order and distance, and no origin. Okay. So it it is nothing but it is just classifying. So this is the definitions which divides the data or which classify the data and that does not have the any order distance and origin so that is the your nominal data okay for example male and female is there okay educated uneducated is there okay rural urban is there so this is the uh, the part of the nominal one nominal uh, scale you can say ordinal one is the classification and order and but there is no distance and origin is there Okay, so this is the ordinal one where you can also talk about the. This is the exist. There is an order is there. So mild, moderate, severe is there. So the, some order is there. Similarly, 
all kind of the rating scale has the ordinal scale so for example five rating six uh, seven rating nine rating and three rating is also a part of the ordinal scale data okay and if you talk about the first division second division third division fourth division this is also a part of the ordinal data so this is the just a classification and there is a order is there interval interval is the classification order and the distance but no origin so what is that the interval means the classification is there order is there and distance is there but there is no origin no origin is there okay in ratio the classification order distance and natural origin is there means here the all the four conditions is lying in the ratio so this is the this we uh, this is the another classifications uh, that is a string and numeric and uh, another uh, classification can be done based on the nominal ordinal and scale so this is valid for the spss once you will be using the spss then there is a four uh, three types a nominal ordinal and the interval and ratio coming into the one part that is the scale so once you uh, you are have you are using the spss then you must deal with the three kind of the level of measurement one is the nominal ordinal and another one is the scale so you can see that uh, ordinal and nom nominal and the interval and ratio will come into the scale and that is the age and height ranking second lower income third income middle income higher income and this is the nominal one so uh, why we need to understand the types of the data what is the purpose to understand the types of data suppose uh, you are having the age in the form of the uh, educated and uneducated so what you what you will do what kind of this sort of analysis you can perform you can just perform only the this much of the respondent are the educated this much of the respondent are the uneducated so you just basically giving the nn percentage or you can draw the pie chart also so not more than that you cannot perform any kind of the statistics so this is called the your nominal one so least analyzable means it means that aap you cannot perform you cannot aap इससे ज्यादा एनालिसिस नहीं कर सकते हैं इफ यू आर हैविंग दी सच काइंड ऑफ द वेरिएबल सो ट्राई टू ब्रिंग आउट दी द वेरिएबल इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द स्केल और इंटरवल एंड रेशियो फॉर्म ओके एंड ऑर्डिनल इज हैविंग द मोर बेटर देन द नॉमिनल वन सो बेटर बेटर इन सेंस व्हाट हियर यू कैन परफॉर्म द मोर एनालिसिस एज लाइक यू कैन गो फॉर द नॉन पैरामेट्रिक मेथड्स यू कैन गो फॉर द एक्सप्लोरेटरी फैक्टर एनालिसिस conformity factor analysis structure equation modeling so this kind of the sort of the analysis you can perform on the ordinal data okay and if you are having the any questions in your questionnaire you are asking on the scale one means ratio or interval then you can analyze it as much as you can okay whatever it is permit according to your data so you can apply the lot of the steps so this is the basically idea so always you need to understand whenever you are going to frame your questions in a questionnaire then you make sure that the each question is giving in what kind of the data and how you will be analyzing in the last so this is the another uh, snap so where you can also see the nominal ordinal and the interval ratio has the different kind of the analysis and how you can perform it okay so this is the number the identify the basic characteristics common example and the marketing example descriptive and you can discrete and inferential statistics you can perform the chi square and the binomial percentile and the rank correlation friedman anova you can also do 
or in case of the interval and ratio so here the coefficient variation geometric mean harmonic mean all this kind of the things you can perform now my uh, next purpose is the more uh, uh, clear about the measurement of the scales okay so here uh, this is the one very very basic example of the nominal so it is a basic comparison example are the male female user non user yes no okay ruler urban these are the example of the nominal scale so here you can use the you know, measuring the average so that is the more and see in the the box so which of the, this this is the question which i am asking to all of you and which of the following soft drink do you like check all the all that apply so here you need to check which one you you are willing to take so that is whatever it is so you are just selecting it and then you are giving the your response after that you can go for the ordinal scale so ordinal scale is the uh, sort of uh, Com doing the comparison and it's based the data must be in some order okay so it's in some hierarchy low low value then high value high value high value or vice versa and these are the example are the brand preferences social classes hardness of the minerals okay so measures of the average is median and mode so same question uh, now my question is to you or to all of you how to convert the previous question into the form of the ranks or in the form of the ordinal data so how you can ask these questions so this is the uh, my questions then you can frame the same question into the this form so rank the following soft drink from one is the least like and six is most like so same question can be converted into the uh, in this form ranking form so similarly you can also understand that how whenever you are writing the questions in a questionnaire then how you can write in a different scales okay so you may be write the same question in the form of the uh, interval and in the ratio then this is the uh, this is the things which you can see here okay so this is the an example where you uh, you can see how the first question can be converted into the ordinal data so rank the following soft drinks uh, from the first is the least liked and sixth is the most liked okay so you are asking the coca cola mountain dew seven up and whatever it is so you are just giving your responses okay so now my again another questions how this ordinal uh, this question the last questions can be converted into the interval interval data what how you can ask this thing? can you visualize this thing how you can convert this data into the in that form so this is the interval scale so basic comparison comparison of the intervals for example temperature grade points average brown attitude or measures of the average so mean median mode will be used so i'm asking what is your overall opinion about the each of these brands so i need to i'm asking your uh, uh, favorables or your opinion about the your brands so you you can ask the question in this form so this is the coca cola fanta and pepsi and then you can get the some interval data okay so the same question can be asked in you know, a different form so even you can also discuss within your team how you can ask these such questions okay so <clears throat> this is interval scale has all the characteristics of the ordinal scale in addition to it uses the unit of measurement with the arbitrary starting and the terminating point okay so for example the celsius scale is 0 to 100 degree celsius or fahrenheit scale is 32 to 213 scale <coughs> or we will taking the differences make sense but ratio do not okay so this is the variable or order in constant scale used and there is no natural zero no true zero <clears throat> similarly now next question is how you can ask the same question in a ratio scale so it is a basic uh, comparison absolute magnitude unit sold number of units sold number of purchase age income height weight 
so these are then example so i can frame the same question so divide 100 points among these soft drinks according to the your likelihood of purchasing each within the next week okay so this is the about the your measurement of the scales okay so now uh, i'm open for the questions so till now what are the your questions please uh, please tell sir we have two questions uh, what is the difference between nominal and ordinal scale but i guess you answered it <laughs> it's uh, discussed lot i think uh, nominal is nothing but both are just classifying the things okay it is classifying but uh, in the nominal there is no order is there in ordinal data there is a order is there for example mild moderate severe is pain is there first division second division third division fourth division okay so these are the one one of the basic example yeah next next questions it says sir wait a minute uh, what does true zero or origin mean it means that uh, if uh, any uh, zero means zero means nothing but if we talk about the temperature so temperature has temperature zero has some meaning so it we can't say that it is a uh, zero so it, uh, temperature has the the value so difference is uh, yeah wait a minute sir uh, difference is in ratio and interval so in ratio and interval uh, we are just discussing about the ratio has the all the four property it is the classification order and uh, distance and origin is there okay and in that case we are having the all kind of the data which is coming into the some forms for example age of the patients height of the students okay marks you got in any exams so this is the sort of uh, an example if we talk about the interval data so interval data is having the some uh, differences between the two variable within the any range okay so that is your interval data it is again giving you some value which is taken from the any scale i think uh, interval and ratio is clear for all of you any other questions yes sir i guess you can proceed there are no more questions someone asking question i think is there any questions please no sir there are no more questions okay okay again i'm um, i'm telling you interval and ratio so for the broadly understanding you can assume that interval and ratio are the one kind of the data where you just having the whatever the value you are getting so exact value for example uh, how many kilometers you are every day how much money you are got from the uh, your house or what is your average salary what is your salary so all this will come into the together but now we need again need to understand the some two three people are asking about the difference between the interval and ratio so this is the uh, you can understand it is a comparison of the intervals basically we are having the intervals and then we are comparing okay so temperature grade points average hmm? and the brown attitude so these are the an example 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल दीरो इंटरवल स्केल एंड रेशियो इज वॉट एवर द वैल्यू यू आर गेटिंग सपोज दट इज दाइट वट इज द वेट what is the uh, results uh, uh, what is the marks you got in any exams so these all are come into the ratio scale so again uh, nominal scale so what is the purpose of uh, um, discussing the measurement of the scales so there are the two things one is is that once you are framing the questionnaire or once you are putting the question in a questionnaire then you always check that what is a measurement of each variable and once you are getting the data then you might be interested to know that what kind of the analysis you can perform okay so in the very beginning uh, of the questionnaire designing or and the end of the your data uh, collected so you need to draw this some kind of the analysis so once you will understand the what is the value of the asking the question in a nominal form or what is the value of the question asking in a interval forms so this is a very important aspect which you can learn so that you can incorporate while you are framing the your question as so this this is the cross tabulations nominal variable with the other gives a uh, pattern in the your data okay so it is just giving you some description of the data it's giving you a pattern of the data and just classification of the data so these are the variable in the exploratory work so where you can explore about the different category the different the classification there are widely used in a survey and research where the data is classified in a subgroups and it will not uh, give you the much analysis as already uh, told you it is uh, just uh, giving you uh, the n n percentage so how many uh, numbers are there in each category and what is the corresponding percentage so that much of the uh, statistics you can apply if you are having the one uh, single uh, nominal scale so while uh, i'm going ahead so i will tell you the one group two group and three group and more than uh, uh, two groups analysis okay so there is a one important analysis let's say there is a one group so one group is uh, what there is a gender variable so this is the one group so only we are having one group and we don't have any other group okay so this is called the one sample or corresponding analysis can be performed okay and if you have the two groups let's say one group is taken from the uh, bihar another is taken from the uh, uh, delhi so these are the two groups on the basis of their health issues so we are conducting the two studies in one is in uh, one site in bihar another is in uh, delhi so these are the two sites which we are considering similarly we can talk about this so these are the two group analysis if we are having the three groups for example one is the uh, um, delhi one is the uh, kolkata and third is the bihar so these are the three groups similarly so these are the three different samples basically these are the three uh, sample which is located in a uh, in three different locations can be a three classifications also so you can divide the data into the three groups so this so corresponding analysis can be uh, applied you can also talk about the more than two analysis more than three analysis and five analysis also okay so this is the important once you will be doing the statistical analysis so now uh, ordinal scale so it is also called the ordinal data so here we are having the more analysis than the previous kind of the data so example of the ordinal data include the attitude and the preference scale the ranking could be a combination of the properties so here the uh, you can apply the central tendency as the most of the technique is the median and you can go for the dispersion as a quartile and the percentile okay 
then statistical tests are conformed to the non parametric so here you can apply the non parametric method chi square test you can apply in case of the two group or more than two groups <clears throat> interval ratio uh, it is the depend that whenever you are having the interval and ratio data then you must uh, talk about the um, what is the your data is uh, symmetrical left is skewed right is skewed then accordingly you can also go for the some kind of the statistical procedures or statistical tests so in that case you can go for the t test you can go for anova you can go for f test or some kind of the parametric methods or you can as well as you can go for non parametric method if it is in the right is skewed and left is skewed ratio score uh, uh, absolute zero or the origin exist in the business research we find the ratio score uh, scale that is the money returns rate productivity rates and uh, here we can apply the geometric mean harmonic mean and co coefficient of variations and other methods you can also apply so basically you can play with the lot of the statistics in this kind of the data okay so here you can uh, apply all kind of the uh, statistical tools in this kind of the data <clears throat> so um, next is the what is the uh, description and what is the exploration discovery differences and finding the relationship so this is the corresponding to the your uh, data so once you are having the data then what you will do with the that data so description is nothing but it is a description of the statistical summary so you just describing your data how it look like okay what are the things is there for the quality check i need to do okay for finding the error i need to do the description of my data so it is a basically giving you a description of your data in many senses how you want to interpret how you can want to understand it okay exploration so exploration is nothing but it is a cross evaluation between the two variables two or more than two variables so there is a some cross evaluation between one variable two variables so this is happening in the cross evaluation and after that discovering the differences discovering the differences means hypothesis testing so discovering the differences means you are having some hypothesis and you wanted to know that the average income of the uh, uh, up and the delhi is the same or differ okay or the mumbai and delhi are the same or differ so this you want to test with the help of the statistical testing so this is the you are discovering the differences okay anova analysis of variance is there or correlation regression this can be a part of the your relationship so where you want to find the some relationship means associations so associations can be seen with the help of the uh, correlation analysis or uh, rank correlation this can be applied for the finding the relationship between the two variable and modely you want to find the cause and effect kind of the relationship then you will going for the regression analysis so in the family of the regression there are the lot of the uh, tests are there in inside of the regression <clears throat> next is the rating scale so rating scale are uh, majorly a uh, contribution of the os goods and the bogardus and uh, thurston and leakers and gutmans okay so i will not go for much in that uh, i think uh, semantic difference differential is given is also good semantic differentiation uh, differential is given is skill development by the os code in 1957 based on the 7 and 5 skills okay the scale score can be a minus 3 to 3 or 1 to 7 whatever you can comparison between the product organization so these are these will be used for the um, for the a uh, behavior research or man management research so where you want to see the perceptions and behaviors Uh, of any uh, anything that you can use the this kind of the things okay rating scale given by the bogardus so bogardus have the distance scale so then rating scale by thurston so he given on the base on the 11 points one is the very negative 11 is the very positive 
so there are the so many uh, skills which is given by the uh, many scientists but i think uh, i will not uh, cover into these all I'm sorry so these are the scaling techniques so the one is the comparative scale or non comparative scale so uh, where you can apply the pair comparison or rank correlation or this or country list rating scale in case of the non comparative scales optimized rating scale so this is the likert semantic uh, differential or staples scale so these are the uh, something about the skills uh, i will not be uh, covering much so now it's uh, i think uh, I, i delivered about the the types of the variables or uh, more on the data measurement data types now we need to discuss about the source of the variations a source of the data so source of the data can be find out uh, in the two category one is the primary data or another is the secondary data so there are the broadly two uh, classifications one is the primary data and another is the Data. So, primary data is what data which is collected directly from the field or from the laboratory or from the any any experiment. For example, I just want to conduct uh, a study on the COVID nineteen. Uh, the the to know the prevalence of the COVID nineteen in um, Delhi city of a particular portion. Okay, so this I want to conduct. So this I am going to uh, look after all these uh, people. who are having the covid 19 so that's a um, i'm doing the primary survey so i'm visiting the persons personally or by other mode of the uh, trans transmission okay so this is i'm looking from the that is called the primary data so whatever the i'm doing the experiment in my lab that is a part of the my primary data so uh, most of the researchers is also bring out the primary data but uh, not uh, least to this we can also explore the secondary data secondary data is what whatever the data we are getting from the uh, from the secondary sources so secondary sources is what you are uh, getting the data from the previous study previous reports and there are the lot of the surveys is going on okay and lot of the marketing data is available lot of the genomic data is available if you are in the social in the sciences then you will see that there is a uh, lot of the data on genomic research microarray research biological research and the clinical research lot of the data is available similarly you can also talk about the um, this uh, public health public health data is available and uh, geo special data is uh, available so these all are all kind of the data is available which is come under the uh, the secondary data so uh, i will take the one of the best data which uh, or which refer by the most of the scientists or most of the scholars that is the census data so which is in, in india which is conducted after the every uh, every decade so uh, census data is having the very huge and vast uh, um, vast variables uh, covered by the census which start from the household to their uh, income health or so many aspect is covered in the census so that data is a part of the your secondary data so which is available on the website if you go on the census gov.in then you will get the census data there is a, another data is on the national family health survey data okay and there is a data on the labor data which is uh, done by the ministry of the labor so there is a planning data is available some budget so most of the person who are in the commerce who are in the economics they are believe on the secondary data so they are just saying that what is the gdp spend uh, gdp uh, growth rate in the, from the 1982 till now now i i am just using the secondary data and on the basis of secondary data i am just performing my analysis so this is all kind of the secondary data which is available and secondary data one kind of the secondary data is that uh, if you are having the 10 article where the people reported their own data on the websites so even that can be extracted and draw some kind of the uh, some kind of the um, inference about the your objective so this is the basically a primary and secondary data which you can understand so uh, this is all about the your data so uh, i can uh, i guess uh, uh, this is uh, covered uh, i think secondary data if you have any other questions please ask then i will be uh, looking the more questions and then
Dr. Parul, Dr. Pankas, please uh, share the questions. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir, uh, there is a question. Zero has meaning in interval, but it is meaning in ratio like zero degree. Census sir, sir. is it what you mean? Uh, it means that uh, See, in the G, uh, in case of the interval, you are having these two kind of the values where you can you are taking the uh, differences between these two values. In case of the uh, ratio, you are having the some uh, zero is having the meaning means zero temperature means it doesn't mean ki zero means uh, zero value. Okay, zero has the some value, so you can say that uh, the uh, zero temperature means the something can be freezeable. Okay, so that can be understand in a, that manner. So that is the meaning of zero degree. <clears throat> okay, what kind of the uh, methods can be used for the analyzing parametric and non-parametric methods? So you can apply the lot of the methods that is available. If, uh, you can start with the parametric methods, so you can go for the one sample t test, two sample t test, and uh, analysis of variance, pair t test. So these are the parametric methods, and correspondingly, signed rank test, or um, uh, Friedman rest test, or uh, Kruskal Valley test. So these are the tests which is available for the non-parametric. Uh, Sivani asked uh, um, scale in SPSS. So there are the three kind of the scales in SPSS. One is the nominal, other is the ordinal, and third one is the uh, uh, the combination of the interval and ratio. So that is called as a scale. So there are the three. Uh, I um, I will not discuss this different test. Please specify your question. <clears throat> Param how you can differentiate between the parametric non-parametric? Uh, it's uh, there are the uh, one of the best thing or for the statistician and uh, is that key whenever we are applying the any statistical test you must check the assumption of any test okay either you go for the chi-square testing or you go for the parametric testing then you must check the uh, assumption so one of the assumption for the t-test is the normal distribution of the sample okay and the uh, equal variance of the their two samples so if it is anything is violated it means that data is non-parametric if it is data is normally distributed and approximately uh, same variance is exist then you can say that it is a parametric um i i think i will be in the next session i will be discussing on the conformatory and exploratory factor analysis and give some example of the ordinal scale ordinal scale is uh, suppose you are going in a flight and after the end of the flight the the airline is asking the please rate our crew our uh, flight services so what you are doing you are saying that you fully satisfied you are not uh, satisfied neutral not satisfied not fully satisfied so this kind of the question is the nothing but it is a ordinal so there is a some order is exist some order is exist low to high okay some equal differences between the options so that is the your ordinal data
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट्स इट सर आई गेस so i guess we have taken all the queries there are no more fresh queries uh one more question so how to test the normality of the data so this can be test with the hell by the viewing the your data so uh, how you can view your data so uh, while you are finding the descriptive statistics and then you need to look the uh, mean value and the standard deviation so if it is your uh, standard deviation is very high then you can also assume that it can be a your not normal data and that there is a one test is also used uh, separable test is there histogram will be there so there are the couple of the methods is available which you can use the for normality of the data in parametric non parametric test also based on sample size yeah if you are doing the any experimental research or you are having the or you will be applying the parametric or non parametric test then you must be uh, use the sample size so sample size in uh, in uh, um, in books it is written that if you are applying the t test so then sample size should be a, a lesser than 30 but if you are applying uh, this t test on uh, on the on on any software then you need not to worry because the software will uh, convert the t test into the z distribution so which is the one of the property of the central limit theorem as you are increasing the sample size then it will be converting into the z distributions yeah you talking for the sample size so once we will be calculating the sample size then uh, in some sense we will be use not in some sense we are using the standard deviations for calculating the sample size for the uh, some of the parametric methods madam anchal any more question no sir there are no fresh questions as of now so oh, i think ha uh, huh. this is done i think on this side so okay. any question any query so you can ask even after the uh, uh, session also you can also contact uh, if you have any further questions so even you can ask from the any any research questions not even from the my topics you can ask any question so uh, sir this is all from your side for today's session yeah yeah so uh, so the sessions were uh, no doubt all the more enriching sir but uh, we need to formally thank you for today's session so uh, for that sir i would like to invite uh, our convener dr kamarjit singh to say a few words for you in order in your uh, honor thanks dr anchal uh, good evening one and all i am very much thankful to dr manoj kumar divakar assistant professor center for economic studies and planning jawarlal nehru university new delhi for accepting our invitation as a resource person for the first day of fdp 
sir you were valuable inputs on the overview of the research research process types of variables and types of data and sources of data contributes a lot for the participants in the area of research on behalf of organizing team i extend a very hearty thanks to dr manoj kumar for gracing with important work and sharing with us with your findings and opinion today thank you sir for accepting our invitation thank uh, you our heartful thanks to our participant also for active participation during this session thanks to all thank you thank you everybody thank you so much sir so uh, with this participants we would like to stop here uh, with our today's sessions so we will be meeting tomorrow thank you so much sir from and the entire committee side too and here are few of the announcements for the participants uh, participants you need to uh, log in via your name you, you need to uh, you know um, log in by using your full name complete name so that you can get the attendance benefit uh, later on you won't be facing any difficulties in getting the certificates and also uh, please underline this thing that we won't be taking any queries from anonymous attendees so please uh, uh, log in via your name so uh, this is all from my side sir uh, would you like to say something no right. all right so sir uh, let us uh, you know Uh, wind up for today and please be on time participants uh, from tomorrow onwards so uh, thank you so much once again okay thanks thanks madam thanks sir okay thank thanks you. to all of you